at the end of time. Thirteen. O'clock. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Wednesday night once again. Yeah, I'm trying to get the lights right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know what to tell you're you. You're over here a lot, aren't you? Hold on. What are you move doing? Over. Why? You're not blocking. You're blocking the central foot. You're, you're, you're move over that way a little bit. Move or that, or maybe it's the, it's, maybe it's the. Um... Yeah, it's not me. I'm in the same place I'm always okay. at. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. I mean, we had to move it around because yeah. when Anastasia was here, yeah, we had to back it up some so we got right. more room. I think that looks best right there. Doing some last minute, last minute adjustments. As usual. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but shit got out of whack. <laughs> well, I don't know. The lights in the back went off, and I didn't. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, they were totally off. I don't know why they went off because I haven't even touched anything yeah, over so there. They today. were unplugged from the wall. Fucking poltergeist shit, man. Yeah. Well, some of that shit happened. Dude. Oh, I was gonna say. Speaking of that. Because uh, this is this kind of goes along with the whole nightmare thing. Yes, yeah. well, the show tonight is going to be all about nightmares. Like, yeah. all about folklore surrounding nightmares, like the most common nightmares, all that kind of stuff. So it's just going to be like a freewheeling show about nightmares, which should be pretty fun and spooky, I would hope. But yeah, so this paranormal thing kind of goes along with this. Listen to this shit, you guys. So, I have a little post-it note that has the Wi-Fi password on it. Yeah, right. For the one upstairs and downstairs. Yeah, because we have two uh, yeah. routers, and they have different passwords. So I have them both written on there, and as for as long as I can remember, I've just had it taped right here next to my computer. So every now and then, because I don't usually need it, because you know our shit stays logged in all the time. Every now and then, like Tom will lose the connection on his tablet or whatever, and he'll accidentally have... erase the shit. Yeah, or something like that. So yeah. he'll have to come in and borrow it. So he came in and borrowed it one time, like ages ago, and then I think you stuck it on, that back on the side, back yeah. side of the thing, yeah. which I was like, can we please put things back where they go so I know where they are? You were working at the time. So but I yeah, so he just stuck it on the back of there, but I saw it there, so it was fine. That was the last time I saw it, and I hadn't touched it since then or nothing. Yeah. So then the other day, we had some kind of issue, and like My Tom needed, and his shit went out. So he's like, oh, where's that thing? I said, well, well didn't where's you stick it on yeah. the back of there? I haven't touched it since yeah. then. And I was like, that was the last place I saw it. I was like, so you Gone. must you must have taken it. But of yeah. course, he still kind of blamed me. But I was so like, dude, I, did with it. I didn't touch it. I swear to God. Yeah. So, um, so we couldn't find it. And we looked everywhere. We were like digging yeah. through all the drawers. I'm like, I know it's not in these drawers. It was stuck on that fucking shit. I know it was. Like, I, yeah. Unless you took it and didn't no. remember, no, I did not touch it. No, I, I put it back there. Yeah. So two, how long was it? Two, three days? No. Did, uh yeah, two days later. I think it was two days later, so we yeah. couldn't find it. Yeah. And I'm like, well, shit, probably I should have written it down somewhere, which I have done since then. So it's written down in a different place now in case we lose the paper because yeah. it's just a post-it note. But, um, but yeah, so Tom's like a couple, like last night or the night before, and he's just like, so I'm going to find that piece of paper. I'm going to find that piece of paper. Yeah, and I got up and, and was going to come into here to find it. And on my way, I was going to um, fill my drink up. And as I came out of the room, just turned left, and it was right there. Waiting right for there. Me. Waiting for me by the ice mix. On the, the little, mix. yeah, there's like a little yeah. like a little cutout like in the hallway that goes into the yeah. like weird living room thing. So it, she was like, what? I said, I'm going to find that thing. I got up and walked out. Two <laughs> seconds <laughs> later. right Two or three seconds. This, here it is. It was right there. He says, you never believe where it was. Yeah, it was set out. It, it 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 gave it back to it me. It appeared there. Yeah, it gave it back to me. Because I was like, no way was that there. Yeah. Because it was right there in the fucking hallway. It's yeah. like I pass that all the time, and it's right behind that ice you machine. You never see it moving it. I don't you know. I don't know where it, it yeah. came from. Yeah. I don't know where it was before that. I don't know how it just disappeared. I was like, thank you, Poltergeist. It disappeared and gave it back. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know. Well, I think yeah. it got lost. That was a weird fucking situation. And I, I got mad about it. And well, so yeah. I'm find it. Right. And then there it was, right here. Because <laughs> it, it's operating in a higher dimension, so it it can see, if it, you know what I mean. It can see it no matter where it is, even if it was sandwiched in between two pieces of paper in a book, put in a bookshelf, it would see it there. You know, and which it, if it was there, then the poltergeist put it there in the yeah, first place. Yeah, it, it gave it back I wouldn't me. put it there. Yeah. But I was like, well, I appreciate it anyway. Yeah, it, it always manifests itself as an outside force. 
I told him like, why I can't, can't control it? Yeah, that's why I was like, it'd be nice if you could, because I was like, yeah. why can't the poltergeist fucking get some money? Yeah, send me like a million dollars. I was like, it doesn't even have to bring me a million dollars like from the bank or anything. It could just like bring me a dollar from like a million people's houses. But yeah. like no one would hear it. <laughs> and then just pile it up I think in the fucking done floor. Before because in Arabic culture they believe in the jinn. Yeah. And a magician can capture a jinn. And then have the jinn find lost treasure and things that got hit, things that got lost and things that got buried. A jinn could do that. What they're talking about is a poltergeist ability. Right. Like dowsing. Which there may be something too dowsing. But I, but I think some people can fake it too. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's But if, if you had psychic awareness, you could probably douse and probably do pretty good. Yeah. Just, just through feelings. But, you know, it's not your conscious mind. It's your unconscious mind. But I did see, like, earlier on that somebody asked us to do a show about Randall Wood Field. Yeah. Um, you know, he was... I guess he worked in a morgue. I've heard that name. Uh, so I wrote that down. And Zach asked if we'd done an uh, SPC Foundation show. We have not. Uh, I wrote that down as well to kind of get into that kind of situation. But, uh, but yeah. So, like I said, <coughs> this should be kind of a pretty fun show this evening. Yeah. Because um, we're just doing shit about nightmares. I thought we had some kind of shout out. Somebody sent you something. That may have been an accident, huh? I'm pretty sure that was an yeah. accident. We got something delivered to us by accident. We thought maybe a... Maybe well, the a weird... Support. Like, I get a box, and it had my name on it, and the address and everything, and then I opened it, and I'm like, what the fuck is... It's like an aromatherapy kit or something. And I was like, which is nice, but I was like, I didn't order that. And then I was thinking, well, I had ordered some, like, foundation, like, some makeup, and it told me that it delivered that, but I never got it. So, it so I'm that. wondering if... So either that... So I don't know if one of you guys sent me some stuff, and in case you did, like, thank you. But I was just confused because I'm like, oh, I got that, but not the other thing. So maybe it got switched. I'm not really sure yeah. what the issue My is. My new pair of new rocks showed up. And that too. Nice. Yeah. I'll show you guys. Oh, he got new boots. Yeah. Oh, shit. New boots. I'm going to get the camera show. Oh, everyone's going to get seasick. Yeah. I don't know if you could see it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's too dark. Too dark. Too dark, yeah. Now it's going to be all out of focus. Damn, yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, now I'm getting seasick. <laughs> it's that handmade Spanish stuff. Had to order it. That's some good shit. They're expensive, yeah. but they last yeah. like forever. They're like three fifty. Right. I were like, were they three fifty? Yeah, I think they were three. I don't know. I didn't pay for them. Uh, yeah, three fifty. <laughs> I'm just saying. But you only had to buy them once. And yeah, because I have, have another pair. It's like almost seventeen years old. They look brand new. Yeah. Real leather and everything, handmade. Yeah. Uh, another shout out, which, you know, I kind of gave on Monday night when we did our review of Late Night with the Devil, was um, Oracle sent me an ebook, uh, kind of like a murder story. And uh, so thank you very much for that. I did receive that. And um, I'm going to do, I actually have to do another book review first because, like, the author sent me, like, a copy of it to review. So I'm going to do that one first, but I'm going to do that one after. And I'm also putting up a movie review of Poor Things tomorrow it's done i just going to put it up tomorrow and i also watched stop motion so i'm going to put up a review of that sometime probably this weekend i would imagine so i think that's probably all the shout outs right yeah so here's the funny thing and i think this is a good lead in to the topic of tonight's show so i even though i write horror i watch horror movies i write about true crime i very very rarely have nightmares maybe once twice a year that are that are <laughs> kind of as night. well that's what i well that's what i was leading into yeah. which you just kind of let me yeah let me get into it you know i think the last time other than last night that i had a nightmare so bad that i still remember it was probably like at least six months ago if not more so ironically i guess we were doing this show tonight i had a fucking horrible nightmare last night and I guess I probably had just fallen asleep because, like, when I looked at the clock, like, when you woke me up, it was, like, what, like, 1.30 or something? And I think I fell asleep about midnight. So I dreamed the, – the dream seemed long because I know there was, like, a lot more lead up to shit that I don't really remember all that well. But the, the long and short of it was was that um, Tom was going to kill me. <laughs> yeah. I dream I was gonna kill her. Like, yeah, and I think that there had been, like I said, I think that was part of the lead up. Like, I knew, like, you would either either threaten to do it or something like that. And like the part that I remember that made me wake up 
And oh, and here's another creepy thing. Whenever I have dreams, I like 99.9% of the time, the the place that I'm at is not a place I recognize. You know what I mean? Um, I very rarely have dreams about um, the house that we're living in at the time. Like if I have a dream about a house, it's usually like a house that I lived in like when I was a kid or something like that. But not usually. It's almost always a place I don't recognize. This dream, however, took place in this house and it looked exactly the way it looks in real life, which is disturbing, which I think was what scared me so much because it seemed so realistic. But at the end of this one thing, it's like, so I knew that he was going to kill me for some reason. Because like I said, there was a whole lead up that I don't really remember that well. And I was out, um, if you go like out this door uh, of my office, it's like the hall. And then there's like a, um, like a thing like over and you can look out down over the stairs, like over the landing. And I was out there and Tom was at the bottom of the stairs. I couldn't see him because it was dark. But I knew he was down there, and I knew that he had like an axe or something. Yeah, like do a jack. And that, jack yeah, jack. where, yeah, or like Amityville horror. I was thinking yeah, of the, you know, the original Amityville horror where yeah. like she had the dream, like he came with the axe and like chopped her head off, or yeah. which always like freaked me out when I was a kid. So it's like, and you were trying to get me to come down there, right? Yeah. But I couldn't see you. But I was like, oh no no no, that is not happening. Yeah. So I'm standing up there going, no 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 no, <laughs> and then like, um, and then you started coming up. Yeah. And then I, just like in a horror movie, like I kind of stumbled and like fell over backward and I was like, oh shit. And then I was like crab walking like yeah. into my office, like yeah. where it is in real life. Yeah. And I came around this table and like back there and shit like that. And I was just like, no, 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 no. And I was like freaking out. And then like Tom woke me up because he said you were kind of, I was trying to scream in the dream, but I couldn't. Nah, you weren't screaming. You were just kind of whimpering. Well, yeah, I couldn't scream in the dream yeah. either. Like I was trying to, but I felt like I couldn't like, talk. Oh, 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 yeah, like oh, I couldn't oh, talk. Oh, oh. Hey, hey, wake up! Yeah, because he was still awake, I guess. No, I was, I was, kind of drifting off. I was in and out of it a little bit. Now, sometimes, sometimes when I, uh, as I'm drifting off and I'm not in real deep sleep, I'll act out my dreams. I'll be talking to somebody that I'm dreaming about. Yeah, you do that. And she'll she'll fucking. I'm like, what? She'll wake me up like what? Uh huh. Which will snap me out of it. Well, because I think you're talking to me because you say something. I may have said something to somebody I was dreaming about. And it caused you to think I was coming to kill you. I might have said, I'm going to fucking kill you. Because you do say that a lot. Yeah, but I say that to the characters that I'm thinking. It's usually yeah. army buddies. Yeah. I'm going to fucking kill you, dude. Because he does say that a lot yeah, in his yeah, sleep. Yeah. Not a lot, yeah. but like every now yeah. and then. I have heard him say that in his Doesn't, sleep. It, it, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. It's not literally, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. That's, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That, you know what? I'm that might explain up. it. That might explain it. might have been that, yeah. Because, but it was just, just like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck you up, man. like I said, it was just kind of like The Shining, but I, when I woke up, the distinct impression I got, yeah. oh, and I was wigged out. I was just yeah. kind of like, I was flipping out. I'm just like, dude, I just dreamed you were going to kill me. And I was just like, I got to go to the bathroom. And then I was like freaking out. I was like, oh, it was like I so was kind of dreaming in and out of it. I was just kind of dreaming. And then that you, you kind of, because I had my headphones in. Mm-hmm. I had one headphone in. Listening to, to, to fucking science and shit. So I'm, I think I drifted off, and I may maybe I was saying or doing something, acting out some kind of dream, and it caused you to do that. You might, yeah, that would explain a lot. I wasn't in a deep sleep. You, I, I came to when you were because uh, I was freaking kind out. of whimpering, and I was like, ah, no, I knew I knew what it was. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, hey, wake up, wake up, you're all right, and, and you went, oh, okay, yeah, you came out. She said, I thought you were gonna kill me. I says, no, I'm not killing you. I'm not gonna try to kill you. <laughs> well, I know you wouldn't kill me. Yeah. I'm just saying. I thought you were trying to kill me. I says, no. No, I said, I didn't Something. say that. I say? said, I said, I, I dreamed that yeah. you were coming up the stairs to kill me. That's right. That's, that's right. what I yeah. said. And I, said and I just laughed. I remember. Because no. I was wide awake after you woke me up. <laughs> yeah. But I was just kind of like, whoa, that's like, oh, that's, yeah. that's the worst dream I've had in a long time. It was still like kind of wigging me out. So I know you would never, because, yeah. you know, Tom's like, I would never hurt you. I'm like, I know yeah. you wouldn't. But it's just like. Maybe, but maybe you did because I do hear you like grumble. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah, kill. yeah. Yo, and he's not. And sometimes I'm like, what? He's like, oh, it's not. Oh. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking. To you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times I'm talking to my buddy Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I talk to Cobb. I mean, you think I'd be used to it by now? Yeah. Erica Lynn said, "Wakes up and punches." Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, one of my ex girlfriends, I woke up because she was going, ah! and I was grabbing her around the throat and trying to. Grabbing your eyes, Pete, and I, th- I thought I was wrestling with Cobb. Oh. My, Cobb is is my kind of go to dream nemesis. He was my army buddy. All right, his he, dream nemesis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if anybody's get on my nerves, it's fucking Cobb. 
Because <laughs> we were living in close quarters all the time. And Cobb was a little fucking slow. And he was just, ooh, 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 yeah, man. Ooh, and he would just try. But, you know, he, he thought you were... He thought you were his best friend, so you couldn't get rid of him. Yeah, he was. Oh, one around. of those. He's yeah. one of those kind. Of I've guys. known some people like yeah, that. Yeah, we time. just kind of took care of him. We like he ended up getting kicked out. <laughs> he was in the army for about two and a half years. He got kicked out, but um, which I think kind of unjustly. There were other dudes that should have been kicked. He got kicked out because one, he was an alcoholic, and they didn't trust him. Two, uh, he uh, had he wrote he wrote a bunch of checks. He was in debt. You can get in if you get into bad financial trouble, they'll kick you out of the army for like financial irresponsibilities. Yeah, so I and that. I didn't really think he deserved it. Other than that, he was a pretty good soldier. He just did whatever, whatever he's told, completed all his tasks. He was kind. Of, that was the one that threw that girl's head at me. Oh I yeah, remember I picking remember up all those body story. parts. He threw that girl's head in a plastic bag. That was kind of, Here's your girlfriend, Tom. Here's your girlfriend, Ross. And I was like, man, fuck you, Cobb. You know, I do it in the back of the truck. That's not funny. That's a girl's severed head. Well, I couldn't see it that clearly. It was I darkness, know, but, but you know, still. I just yeah. <laughs> it was in a bag. I hope so. Yeah, we had all the bodies. All the body parts were in bags. That's a long story. That was out in Egypt. Yeah, I think you probably told that a couple yeah. of times before. Out Sinai Peninsula. Yeah, it was like a bus crash. Yeah, bus. We were crash rescue. We, well, we got tasked out to be crash rescue because we were kind of like, we were there on a on a UN mission and we were kind of what was called the MFO mission and we got alerted out from uh, the little camp that we were on and uh, to go help evacuate survivors from a big old fucking bus crash that happened out in the desert at night. But by the time we got there, all the living people had been evacuated already by, by a truck that came along and picked them all up. The only thing that was left behind was the dead. So they put us on fucking body duty. Body recovery. Bag, yeah, bagging and tagging all those bodies. Yeah. Which were about 15, 20 of them. And some of them were in pieces, mm -hmm. I hate to say. One of them was a real beautiful Israeli girl. That was where the head was. Yeah, her, she got her head was missing. Yeah. The top part of her head, well, the, the, the top half of her head. Yeah. <laughs> the bottom half was still attached to her. I drug her down the dog, down the, Ugh. I drug her down the. That's uh, fucking horrifying. Yeah. I drug her down the, um, the aisle way in between the bus seats. Some of her clothes kind of came off. She was wearing a tube top. She was like a, an eight. She was super good looking from the body. And when I looked at her. Keep it classy, Tom. <laughs> yeah, well, people were like, "Oh, you know, when when I when I was drug her down the stairs, it was fucking pretty bad." And um, we we fucking bagged her, and uh, the uh, her head was gone. Yeah, it was pretty rough how it, how it happened. But um, so that's what Kyle was saying. Here's your girlfriend. That's what he said. That, that, it was like that, throwing it was, part, yeah, of it was a part of her. Like yeah. I guess you kind of have to do that kind of stuff because yeah. the situation is so horrible that if you don't kind of make light of well, it. Well, at the time, no. At the time, we 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 thought it was exciting, like it's an adventure. It was better than it was like a break from the monotony. Like, yeah, wow, look at this! Look at this gross shit, you know. Uh, but you kind of got them dehumanized, you know, because they're they just look like mannequins. You don't know these people, right? And they're all foreigners, so they're not your people. They're not guys that you you work with. They're just these. You know, it was a mixed bunch of just Egyptians and Israelis and stuff, and uh, we didn't know them, you know. Didn't yeah, know I mean, I guess it'd be easier. So, I mean, it'd yeah. still be gross, obviously, yeah. but it'd be easier if it wasn't somebody. You but went through that with. girl's purse and her fucking. It uh, had her name and her photograph in there on her ID, and it was and it was her birthday. She was killed on her birthday. I mean, I guess yeah, she didn't were, suffer, but yeah. still, that's awful. Yeah. Eesh, now I'm going to have nightmares about that, probably. Mm. Well, that's the thing, though. It's like, I that's, have had nightmares about that. I find well, that, I don't blame you. <laughs> I find, and I'll have nightmares when I'm fucking underneath the water, scuba diving in a freshwater lake, and I'll come up on that bus, and I'll go in through the entryway oh, of that bus. Oh, that's and awful. And all my bodies are floating in the water. Yeah, I think you told me that I, before. Yeah, I'll have that. Oh, I would shit myself yeah. if I had a dream. It's like time. real eerie because it's dark, black. Right. And, you know, nighttime underneath the water. And I got a flashlight. And then and, you and just a like. Gear. And then it comes up. And, yeah, and all these people floating in there. Because, man. And I'm like, I got to get them all out of here. And that's really where that dream kind of ends. Yeah. Ugh, that's horrifying. Yeah. I just, any kind of dream, because I used to have, I don't, don't really have them 
these types of dreams anymore, but I used to have a lot of them when I was younger of being underwater, like scuba diving or swimming or whatever, and then like having some huge thing like loom out of the darkness. Oh, that's the word, like yeah. a big eye or some shit like that. Ugh. Yeah. I remember when I shined the damn light down through that underwater bus, there was just like middle aged middle aged Egyptian dudes, you know, in short sleeve business suits. Some of them are in them down. Like it looked like I don't know, some kind of Arabic suit it's, it looked like pajamas to me you know you know pajama dress look at the yeah, yeah, nose yeah. and then, I, then in the back i see that israeli girl floating in her fucking in her fucking short shorts and that fucking tube top yeah yeah no no shoes i mean i don't like it, like if i had yeah, seen that i don't think i would ever be able to get that image out of my yeah, head so i'd probably weird. dream about it all the time too yeah that's part of my fucking that's part of my va buddy comes from that shit doing that crash rescue Although it was weird, it was just like, uh, I mostly just developed hypervigilance. Hypervigilance is kind of paranoia. Jenny knows. She deals with it. Yeah. I don't, I can't go to sleep when it's, when it's quiet. I have to have noise. Around yeah, that's way. why. So he had to get earbuds because for a long time he didn't have earbuds. So we always had to listen to stuff. Yeah. Like, but, and I, and I can't sleep when there's noise or light. Yeah. You know, I need darkness and quiet. So... Darkness and quiet was always danger to me, you know. I, know. I was in a recon see, unit, so we're right, always slipping around it. at night. That's the time where you kill people. And I get it, but killed. then on the kill other hand, killed. in the situation that we're in now, just living in a regular-ass house, yeah. I always kind of like to be able to hear, like, so it's quiet, so it's like, oh, well, if somebody breaks in, I can hear them. I don't want to have, like, fucking yeah. headphones in and somebody breaks in and, yeah. like... You know, the original Night well, Stalker just, comes in there and puts plates on Jen, you and shit. Jen, Jen, if Jen detects anything, she wakes me up because she detected people. Well, well there's a poultry guys that think fucking ring the doorbell. Ringing the night. doorbell. Yeah, open in the garage at night. At like three or yeah. four thirty in the morning or yeah. whatever it was, and there was nobody there. Yeah, nobody there. But yeah, so there was that. Now everybody's starting to talk about uh, sleep paralysis. Yeah, I have it. Um, Sometimes I've had it one yeah. time. The Phantom said, I've had three sleep paralysis experiences in my life. They've always resembled the hooded cloak-wearing ring wraiths without arms or legs and no face from Lord of the Rings. Also yeah. tall as fuck. Yeah, a lot of people see that kind of stuff or just like an amorphous shadow kind of figure. The one time I had sleep paralysis, and I know when I have a friend that has real bad sleep paralysis, and she's told me like some of the shit that she saw, and I'm just like, man, I'm fucking glad I don't have that. But um, I had it one time, and it was when I lived by myself in an apartment and I woke up and I saw a person like, you know, obviously it was just, it didn't look like supernatural. It looked like a guy, but you couldn't really see him. He was just like shadowed and he was like, had a baseball bat and he was standing in the, um, you know, in the threshold of my bedroom. The weird thing about it is that even though it looked realistic on some level, I knew that it wasn't really there. Yeah. So it didn't really, I kind of woke up and I was like, what the fuck? And then I was like, oh, okay. Like, I kind of knew what was happening. Like, because if I thought that was a real person, I would have like fucking screamed and jumped up and stuff like that. But I didn't. They asked me if the army got me any counseling. No, they don't give, they don't do that. And the thing is, is that you can't counsel soldiers at the time because they they're, they don't feel upset about anything. It's not until much later, later is when it when you get older, because you get old enough, you can look back on it and go, damn, that was some weird shit. It, because you're, you're young, and you're in a big wolf pack. Of these yeah, so days. everything seems to, like, not matter as much. It seems to matter, and it's all cool. Right. But then, like, uh, you think about it later, afterwards, and you're like, man. That was I can't believe up. I did that. Right. You know I, mean? yeah. I think that happens a lot, especially, like, with young men. Yeah. Because um, they really don't seem to develop all the way until maybe they're in their mid 20s uh, mid to late 20s mid to late 20s so yeah. i kind of feel like a lot of stuff they do as teenagers stuff they're just like ah whatever you know what yeah, i mean like they're not really yeah. yeah you're not really thinking about it too hard you're not but really it's only self- it's only in hindsight you're just kind of like shit that was yeah. fucked well up. you're not self-actualized at right the time, so you're not fully conscious which i think nature kind of selected that i think for survival in men and in, in males probably of all species because if you're too introspective and you think too much about things, you'll fail at what your mission is, which is to knock up young girls and to protect yourself from fucking predators and other dudes that are trying to kill you. So introspection is not, I think, in all males of all animals, 
introspection is you don't really you. get that until you later. don't want that actually some dudes never get that, that. yeah uh, <laughs> as, uh, introspection is an emergent property that comes after L- late 20s early 30s i think yeah once you've gotten some experience under your belt and yeah. you've calmed down some yeah i think well nature <laughs> nature and humans figures that you've already reproduced or failed to reproduce by this point so let's go ahead and uh, you, we'll give you some higher functions. Yeah, you can just, you can, now you can have the higher functions. Now you can have higher functions, right. <laughs> Prior to that, it was right. like, yeah. Well, the same thing with girls. Girls like get baby crazy, you know what I mean, when they're teens. and it, I didn't. And some, a lot of girls do. A lot of girls get baby oh, crazy. Oh, I know they did, but I didn't. When they're in their teens. And if they don't have them in their late teens or teens, then they, they may not ever have them, you know. Some, like we got friends that have a bunch of kids. When their kids had kids, they liked the fact that they had them early to get it out of the way. You know, Jed's daughter, who was a baby last time we saw her, already has a baby. Yeah. And I says, I, I mean, said, she's not. She, yeah, so she's you, an you older let teenager. That happen? She goes, well, she's eighteen. What can I do? Yeah. I mean, she's and, and, and she goes, it's a good thing she's having them now, like I did. Get them out of the way. Yeah, because that's what Jen did. She had. Them Jen, yeah, she had, had them when she was young. And now they're grown. So. Yeah, they're grown and gone. Most of. them. And she's still, she's younger than me, so. Yeah, and she's still beautiful and youthful. Yeah. Because um, the female body can handle it when it's young. Yeah, Snaps back quick. Not so much when you get older. Well, get older, so, some bodies can handle some, it. Some, depends, yeah. I, I, I knew some that had, had yeah. them young and never yeah. recovered. But yeah, so like I said, it's all individual. It depends on the person. The Phantom said, I always have recurring dreams about killer whales in a lake. Yeah. Which makes me wonder if whales can enter the same dream realm as humans. That's Maybe weird. they can. I have dreams about whales when when water's around, and it's a lot of times it's lakes. Yeah. Isn't or that ocean. interesting? I don't think I I don't remember having any dreams about whales. I've had for sure dreams about sharks and like sea monsters. Yeah, I remember swimming in. The, I remember having a dream swimming in the ocean at night, like I'd fallen out of a ship or something. And as I'm swimming, I'm looking down, and all I see is just this immense blackness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of the ocean. And then all of a sudden. I realize that actually I'm flying above a huge fucking valley, like over a desert. That's what it's really like underneath there. You know what I mean? Is it's a and I'm thousands of feet in the air over the surface because you're floating in the water. You know, we see floating as floating, but to a fish, they see what's flying. Yeah. You know, and it's fucking. You think about how you're way above the ground. You know, getting vertigo. Yeah, I just like I that freaks me out. I used to have a I don't not so much anymore like I said, but I used to have a lot of dreams like that. Yeah. Like right. deep water kind of stuff. Camp guy said I had another good dream where I was in charge of a bunch of kids at an outdoor picnic event and a giant alligator was coming up on us. I couldn't get the kids to run back from the water ditch with the gator. I was running around yelling at everybody and nobody was listening. That sounded kind of sounds like a nightmare, honestly. honestly. Said so that dream was a direct link to our real life situation. My wife was starting chemo for breast cancer and we were in an unknown position. The alligator represented the bad consequences of the cancer that we didn't understand. It was unknown. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, you know, people can talk about dream interpretations. I kind of want to get into that a little bit, like, toward the end of the show. Maybe, like, the most... I Because I came across, like, these papers about the most common dream themes. Because I was kind of interested to see, like, what the most common uh, dreams that people had were. And what maybe they meant and stuff. It's like, you know, there's a lot of different interpretations of them. But, you know, usually they're symbolic something that's going on in your life if you're going through some stress or whatever so yeah we'll get into that in a little bit too um Devorah says my worst childhood nightmare was a liminal back room like a huge empty house with no exit and i was being hunted down by a monster tom's had some dreams like that you told me yeah. you had dreams like that when you were a kid yeah i've had a couple dreams where i was in a house and couldn't get out but i that's not usually one of the most common dreams, because like I said, one of the um, things I wanted to get into toward the end of the show was just like the most common dreams that people had. And I didn't know this until I started looking into this a few years ago, because I used to have, I haven't had one in a long time, but I used to have a lot of dreams about my teeth falling out. Yeah. And I didn't realize that that was like super common. Or becoming aware that you're in school and you're naked. Well, yeah, that is, that's even more common yeah, than yeah. teeth falling out. Yeah, somehow your, your clothes are gone. Yeah. So yeah, and we'll talk about that. Your pants on. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if I've ever had a dream like that, but um, <laughs> not that I remember anyway. Somebody said like looking for a bathroom uh, is is always the worst one. It's like now that's 
this is gonna sound crazy, but this is probably the most common dream that I have. And I know why, like, I know that some people are just kind of like, oh, you know, looking for a bathroom. It's like some kind of thing about shame or embarrassment. No, it's not. It's your body trying to wake you up saying, hey, go pee or you're gonna wet the bed yeah. is I think that's what that is. Because I usually have to get up like once or twice to go to the bathroom at night. And I think that's my brain because I will inevitably have a dream and it'll just be like a regular ass dream where I'm just doing random shit. And then all of a sudden I'll be like, man, I have to go to the bathroom. And then like every bathroom I find, like either I can't find a bathroom, the bathroom I found is like a disgusting train spotting bathroom, <laughs> or um, there's something otherwise wrong with the bathroom. Like all the stalls are open and like people are like looking at you and stuff. What about the one where you're in the mall and you're trying to leave the mall? And every escalator you take up, you arrive at the bottom of the escalator. Every fucking door leading out of the fucking mall actually ends up being an entrance back into the mall. It's like a big Mobius strip. Right. You had that one? There's no way out of the mall? Yeah. yeah I kind yeah. of, that's probably, I think a lot people of people have yeah. have those kind of dreams about being trapped, yeah. like in a house they can't get out of or a situation yeah. they can't get out of, you know what I mean? And that usually, that's obviously have something to do yeah. with, like you feel trapped in your real life. Fuck it. You know how some some grocery stores have like a like a like a conveyor belt that takes the groceries out the back and they'd load them into your car. Right. It's kind of like something that would be like at a for what do you call it? Kind of like at the kind of like at the airport where the luggage, you know, where they're bringing the luggage out to you, the the luggage, the luggage claim. I said, "Fuck it, I'm going out of the mall that way." And I got in the fuck on the conveyor belt with the groceries to go out the back, and as I came out, went out the back, all of a sudden I'm coming in the front. Couldn't even get out on the escalator. No, he's like, wah, 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 wah. wah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Allison said oh, she also has uh, dreams of the teeth coming out. Yeah, I've, um, and they're usually super realistic, too. The one that I remember the best, like I said, it's just, it the, the dream usually is not stressful. It's usually not a nightmare. It's just usually, like, a random stupid dream. Like, I'm doing something mundane. Like, for one, for instance, like, I think I dreamed... I was doing something and then I was like in the McDonald's drive through or something boring like that. And then all of a sudden, like all of my teeth just started falling out of my head and I could feel them like going out over my lips. You know what I mean? Like, and you know, and it was like so realistic. The sensation was so realistic that the second I woke up, I was like, shit, all my teeth fell out. What am I going to do? I can't afford. And then I was like, oh, wait, it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I could actually feel it. And I thought I was just, like, a crazy person until I started looking into it a lot. But, and that's not the most common dream, but it's, like, super, super common. They think that it has something to do, and like I said, I don't really know because everybody has different interpretations of dreams and stuff, but they think it has something to do with either insecurity about your appearance, which, you know, okay, that's fair enough. I have that. Um, or you feel like you're like loss of power like you don't you feel powerless like in your life because teeth i guess represents power because you know we're that's going back like when we were cavemen or whatever because if your teeth fell out you'd like probably starve to death you know what i mean back in the old days so as you know both of those sound uh reasonable to me um yeah, High Desert said, oh my god, Tom, I've also had dreams where I'm having stuff, so I'm getting out of the mall. I'll have to tell him that when he comes back from the bathroom. Yeah, Allison said, or my contact lenses either get dried up or are too big to put in. Oh my god. I don't wear contact lenses, or, I mean, I wear the colored ones sometimes when I go out, but um, they're usually such a pain. I have a hard time getting them in and taking them out, so I don't usually wear them. But if I did, I would probably have that dream too. High Desert said um, that he's also had dreams where he's having a tough time getting out of the mall. Yeah. It's what, and the Phantom said, I've had a dream about a mall and I was stopped by a security guard holding a phone saying it's for you, only to wake up right after a text message alert on my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Allison says teeth dreams mean death. I've heard that as well. I hope not because I've had a lot of those. What dreams? Teeth. Oh. Like no, dreams about your teeth. I, mean, I, think, I think it means helplessness. Yeah, I've heard it means powerlessness yeah. or that you're insecure about your appearance or like, or you're worried about aging. Like you don't look yeah. as good as you age teeth or something like out. that. And like I said, it's not usually, cause some people dream that their teeth break. I've had a couple like that, but most of the dreams that I have are they just spontaneously start falling out. And they're and the sensation is usually really vivid. Like I can feel, feel them the out. teeth like coming out over my yeah. lips and like falling. When mine fall out, they come out like in rows of corn. Like, you <laughs> that's corn, funny like four of them connected at times that's funny and, and we're like whoa 
Oh my god! Like when you cut off a corn, corn cut the corn off yeah, the corn cob. Yeah, that's pretty it's funny. Like that, yeah. I just didn't know how common that dream was, but it's kind of fascinating. Like I said, I found a couple papers which I want to kind of get into, like after we talk about the folklore stuff, where they were like compiling the most common themes in dreams. And some of the stuff that maybe you think is not all that, like you think you're the only one dreaming that, is, is like common, a lot yeah. more common. Well, somebody yeah. said they couldn't get out of the mall also. Yeah, I don't know why mall, but mall. Maybe because it's public. Yeah like, any, it yeah, like any, yeah, like any, if you think about any kind of like big public place, it's going to be like yeah. a shopping mall or something yeah, mall, like yeah. that. I could, I could see that. I'm going to get some of that pills, man. I need my sinuses to get into. Oh, yeah, he needs his antihistamines. Yeah. I might need some more ice, too, in a minute, like. While you're up and around. While you're up and around. But yeah. One thing, like, so I kind of wanted to get into just some random shit that I thought was kind of interesting about nightmares in general. Um, as far as how common they are. I mean, I'm like, pretty much everybody has dreams, I guess, unless you have some kind of disorder um, that you don't have them. Not everybody remembers them, obviously. Most people don't remember them unless you, you know, keep a dream diary and wake up in the middle and write them down and stuff like that. Like, cause I feel like most of my dreams, even the dreams I do remember are kind of boring. You know what I mean? I have a couple like super crazy ones that I still remember, but most of the dreams I have, it's like, oh, I woke up and did this boring thing and this other boring thing. And it was boring. You know what I mean? And the weird thing too, just like I said earlier, how I don't usually dream about places that I know, it's always like some random house or some random city or something like that um i very very rarely dream about people i know which is in itself pretty weird i guess i don't usually now that i think about it it's like most of the people in my dreams um even though sometimes in my dreams there's like oh this is my friend or whatever and it's like i wake up i'm like who the fuck was that i don't know who the fuck that was it's very very rare for me to dream about people i know like, other than the dream that I had last night about Tom, like, how he's going to ax me to death, that might be one of the... No, I've had dreams with you in them before, but... Well, after that dream, you know, I had another dream about... The, I had another thing where I woke up, felt like I was suffocating, and I had to come out here on the damn couch to go back to sleep for a second. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah. Well, that, that was one thing that I thought was kind of interesting. There have been some studies done, because I guess, um, going back to the 19th century, there was a theory... Which actually sounds plausible, this isn't crazy. That people that had sleep apnea um, were maybe more susceptible to nightmares than other people. You know, sleep apnea, obviously, if you don't know, that's when you stop breathing when you sleep. Which you do sometimes, but like every now and then. But what they found, interestingly, when they studied that was the exact opposite. Was that actually normal, quote unquote, people that didn't have sleep apnea... Um, had more nightmares than people that did. And I wonder if that's because the person with sleep apnea is waking up so much that they don't ever get into the state, like a deep enough REM state that they would yeah. have nightmares that they would remember necessarily. I don't know. I could just be talking about my ass, but talking out my ass. But that's kind of about my ass. talking about my ass. Yeah, talking about your ass. Yeah, <laughs> that's like making a movie. That's about that's your, your ass. job. <laughs> I talk about your ass all the time. I know you do. That's why I said yeah. it was your job. Make a movie about your ass. Yeah, yeah. Camp guy says get a get a CPAP machine. Yeah, yeah. It's well, he doesn't have it that often. It's just like every now and then. And yeah. honestly, the last time you had it, you had it last night, but that you told me, I didn't hear it. But um, but the last time you had it, it was almost like a weird paranormal thing. Yeah. Because you had it, and then like uh, the next day, you found out that your dad was in the hospital. Well, I was worried about it. Right. Too, and then like some weird weather, well, weird shit, smoke alarms going off and stuff. Mm. But uh, that was that was happening before that also, and somehow it got mixed up with my stepdad too. Because when he died, he couldn't breathe. He right. had he had he had Lou Gehrig's disease, so he couldn't. He was his his muscles shut. His, his muscles wouldn't work. His he became so paralyzed that he couldn't breathe. They had to intubate him and blow air into his lungs. And in, in his final days, it, it killed him pretty quick. You know, once once he got to part where he couldn't breathe at all he, he was a couple weeks and then he was dead but uh seeing him basically say that he was suffocating that that kind of like man that'd be a horrible that made die. a big impression on you yeah, I I, like, because i remember when that happened yeah yeah and i didn't like the guy 
but I still had fucking kind of like some empathy for him. I'm like, he's dying in a fucking dastardly way. It's a bad way to go. You know, and it was a bad way to go. He, he, he says he's he's they're blowing air through him, and he's going, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I'm suffocating. Yeah. I can't breathe. He can't. He couldn't take in a breath because his fucking body was shutting down. Lou Gehrig's fuck you up. Got yeah, the, and got the it, VA hooked him and my mom up because they said it was from an anthrax vaccine they gave him. They the, they gave him an experimental vaccine that did that. Or they had a lot of them in, in the Marine Corps back in the '60s. They gave it to him, and that probably is what did it. And uh, they gave me a bunch of them things when I fucking went in on the first Gulf War. So there's no telling. So I had this paranoia that I'm going to die like of Lou Gehrig's disease, and then my dad. His heart was so fucked up. He said, I can't catch my breath. He was saying that as he yeah. was dying. And so for me, death is about not being able to breathe. Right. So it's kind of fucking with me lately. And there's no way I can get it out of my head. Yeah. Because yeah. like I said, you don't have it every night. But like every now and yeah. then, like he'll wake up or I'll, or he'll I'll, he'll wake me up. Yeah, I got bad allergies. And, and during the allergy season, my sinuses get clogged up. And when I'm yeah. sleeping, I like to breathe through my fucking nose. So it translates to I, I'm dying because I, I can't breathe. Yeah. I'm suffocating. And that's and I was gonna say the pollen in yeah. Florida has been really bad. Yeah, it's real bad right now. So man, you I go out normally, in the morning and our car is just covered with yeah, yellow. Yeah, it gets dust. yellow and shit. So it's you know I'm not normally taking fucking sinus pills. It's 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 this is Dagobah. Yeah, from Star Wars, man. And some Florida. years are worse than others. It's been bad. It's lately. been bad this year, and it started early. Yeah. You know, usually it doesn't start till like later in the spring, but it kind of started in February. So, you know, I've had, pro I haven't had too many problems. Like waking up, I'm just kind of like my sinuses are kind of thing. And like, I have like kind of sinus headaches and my eyes water a lot. Sometimes it's one eye, sometimes it's both eyes. It's usually just one eye and it just drips and drips and drips and drips like all day. Yeah. And there's like nothing I can do about it. And he was like making fun of me earlier because we went out to get, we went to the liquor store or whatever, and it was dreary today. Like, I don't think it, did it ever rain? I thought it rained for like a second, but it was just like real overcast and cloudy, which I like. But, you know, Tom was like, I was going to go out on my bike today and I couldn't go, but you know. Yeah. But um, even then, like we went out and I'm just like, this is too bright for me. <laughs> like my eyes were watering. Yeah, her really... face, man. Her face I was all like, screwed. I was like, what's wrong with that face on your face? I was like, it's too bright. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? It's like all cloudy. I'm yeah. like, it's still too bright. Yeah, she was like, her face was all fucking grimaced up. And she, <laughs> like, I'm going to run around the grimace in a dress. <laughs> yeah. That's grimace. not nice, Tom. That's what it was like, in a dress, grimacing. So, so you're in that sexy ass dress, man. Fucking get your fucking face <laughs> smiling. Oh, don't you tell me. Don't you yeah. tell me to smile. I'll grimace if I want to grimace. grimace. I can't fucking see, man. Yeah. <laughs> My eyes are watering. <laughs> The Phantom is saying, uh, the beings people see during sleep paralysis got to be real species of being, because how can so many people see the same looking being or creature? Just saying. I think they're archetypes. Well, yeah, it could be just that, because we'll kind of get into, now one thing that I do want to get into, talking about the folklore of nightmares, is that indeed, much like dragons, remember the show we did about dragons? Yeah. But this is probably not as weird as the whole dragon thing, but cultures all over the world, I think literally every culture on earth has a sort of folklore about some type of demon or some type of being that gives you nightmares and 99% of the time this being sits on your chest yeah 95% of the time it's a woman yeah like a hag or something but, you know, I, I don't know if I'd say 95% of the time, but a lot of the time it's usually Talk a woman. sleep paralysis. Yeah, and it's, yeah, and it's usually, like yeah. I said, and I kind of want to get into that, because that is really interesting that every culture that I looked into has a very, very similar, but I don't think that that necessarily means that that's a real thing. It just means that, you know, human brains are similar all over the world, and given a certain set of circumstances, for example, sleep paralysis, um, there's only a certain number of stories that our brain is going to come up with. I think that's kind of what happens. Yeah, something's sitting on you. You can't get up. You can't sit up. You're stuck to the bed. That's what that's all about. Yeah. Sleep paralysis. I've had it. I like sleep paralysis. Whatever it happens to me, I always thought it was kind of fucking a positive experience. Well, if you know what it is. Yeah, I know what it is. So I'm like, oh, it's this. Yeah. Because you can have visions during that time and do right. that shit. Yeah. 
get some weird fucking paranormal information during that time. Because you're in a kind of a an interesting mind state. I've had visions in it in that time. You're like, oh, I'm doing this. Okay, see if I can leave my body. And then I'll go into a lucid dream, which is kind of like kind of like astral projection, but it's not as real. Astral projection feels real. So it's a real out-of-body experience. It's kind of like an NDE. Well, the more that I was like reading about this topic over the last couple days, the more I was like, I kind of want to get more into experimenting with, like, I was like, maybe I should start keeping a dream journal. Maybe I yeah. should like start experimenting with lucid dreaming and stuff like that, because I kind of always wanted to get into that, but I never really got into it. Now, the More couple you... times that I've had real, real bad yeah. nightmares, I usually get up and write it down because I want to use it for a story. Yeah. Cause I have like written some stories that were based around nightmares that I had. The more you focus on it, the more it'll happen to you. Right. That's so, yeah. You're kind of like asking it to happen. Right. And it, it'll give you what you want. So that's kind of what I was like, I kind of was interested in getting back into that. Cause like I said, you know, I write horror, so I've several of my stories I can think of at least two or three like offhand that were directly based on horrible nightmares that I had. Like I said, I don't have a lot of nightmares. I usually maybe one or maybe one or two a year, if that. Um, but the ones I have tend to be real bad. But I just don't have them that often. But every time I have one like that, it's almost it's horrifying, but it's also kind of exciting because I'll wake up and go, Oh, I gotta write that shit down. <laughs> I'm gonna turn that into a story. But yeah, so in some ways it's kind of positive, even though it doesn't feel like it at the time. You know what I mean? So yeah, so here's the interesting thing. So I feel like probably the best known, and maybe this, in, especially in the West, I feel like this is maybe because of the whole, the Henry Fuseli painting, which is called The Nightmare, which is one of my favorite paintings, actually, of like the woman laying down with a little demon on the chest, and then yeah. there's a horsey in the background. So the most common one that people know about here is the mare. Now, the mare is a demon. It doesn't really have anything to do with the horse, and actually, the etymology of those two words is separate. You know what I mean? Um, now, there did become an association between the demon and the horse, like, I believe later on. But those two words didn't normally have anything. Because I feel like nowadays, like, people are just kind of like, oh, nightmare, like it's a horse. Because mare is obviously the English word for a female horse. But it doesn't have anything to do with the original word that actually just kind of meant a demon. You know what I mean? So, so that's what we're, you know, and like I said, they don't know exactly, but where the, the folklore of the mare came from was from like, um, Slavic Germanic folklore, you know, Norse, that kind of stuff. Um, and like I said, there are equivalents in pretty much every other culture that you would care to name, which we'll kind of get into as we go on, like the similarities and the differences, cause they're kind of interesting. Um, but in almost all cases, this is a demon or some kind of supernatural being that either walks on your chest or sits on your chest or holds you down while you're sleeping or something and makes you have bad dreams in almost all cases. Now, they think that this word came from like a, a very old, like Proto-Indo-European root, uh, mer or mare. A word that, you know, or a prefix rather that connotes um, crushing or oppression of some kind is what that word means. So that's why that word, that's where that word comes from. So it doesn't have anything to do with the horse. That was like a later kind of thing. Um, and in, in, interestingly, in a lot of the kind of, um, you know, like uh, Danish, Icelandic, Norwegian languages, um, all of the words for nightmare actually mean mare ride. As in, a demon is riding on you yeah. and giving you bad dreams. So I think it's like really interesting. Like I said, and this is obviously from sleep paralysis because, you know, you wake up, your brain's awake, but your body is not. So you're seeing things, but you can't move. So obviously, even though a lot of people don't experience sleep paralysis ever, I believe it's about 20% of people that experience it. Um, it's common enough that it seeped its way into pretty much the entire world's folklore as this particular thing, like something sitting on you is pretty much what it is, like some kind of demon or being. If anybody or doesn't know what sleep paralysis is, I'll describe it for you. You're asleep. You're having a dream that wakes you up. 
You your eyes open, you can see the room, but you try to get up, but you can't. Your body's shut off. It's turned off. So you've regained consciousness before you've totally awakened. And when you're in that state, sometimes you can see the room and you can see your dream at the same time. Like projected on it. Projected onto it. So you see the room and then you'll see another person standing there. But that person is from a dream. It's not really there. It might be somebody threatening you. It might be somebody who is dead that you know, a relative. Um, one time I had it happen where I opened my eyes. I couldn't move. And I looked at the wall next to me and saw a face coming out of the wall like something out of them. It was just like Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, it looked like that Pink Floyd the Wall. Oh, okay, that too. Port, you know, like that animation. It looked kind of like that. I could see it. It didn't scare me though. I was like, oh, I'm dreaming. And then uh, I went back to sleep. Never did, never could move. You try to move and you can't. So that's where the paralysis. Yeah, part. that's because, and they pretty much if figured this out. It, if you don't know what's happening, you fight it. It could scare you. Yeah. So that's why these people were saying that. Well, it's a nightmare, or I got an incubus or a succubus sitting on my chest and I can't get up you know what I mean you might dream that there's something sitting on your chest you might actually see it but it's dream you know yeah you're just projecting the, yeah the room the room is your room and you're awake but there's dream images on top of them yeah meshed in with it like an animation yeah. cell like on top of a background yeah if you're scared of it, it, it you know if you don't know what's going on it'd freak you out but if you if you have experience with it you know what it is you're like oh okay it's this no big deal. Well, see, that's the weird thing. The one time that it happened to me, I had never had it happen before. I knew what it yeah. was. I'd yeah. heard other people talking about it, obviously. But the one time I had it happen, even though it happened and the shit was realistic, it looked like a dude with a baseball bat standing in the threshold of my bedroom when I lived alone. Yeah. But see, for but some reason, like, I couldn't move or anything, but I knew that it wasn't real. So see, I was just kind of like, huh. And what's happening is, is that when you go to sleep, your brain shuts down your your uh, motor your motor ability. So you don't act your so dreams you don't act your out. Dream out. You don't want to jump out a window or some shit like that. No, you can act out your dream. It's called sleepwalking. Yeah. Okay. So it shuts down all your motor functions. And then your higher functions, like your consciousness, goes into dream state. Well, you could wake up while your body is still asleep. You can't move. Part of your Because your, bra your brain is saying, nah, fuck it. It takes, it takes a long time to... When you're in certain phases of your sleep, it takes longer for your body to come come back awake. You yeah. Know? If you're in a dangerous environment, you never really go to sleep. You're always kind of awake. You never go into a deep sleep. That's why you'd be. That's why warfare and shit is so stressful and tiring. You can't really go to sleep. And if you don't get sleep, I mean, and if you don't sleep, you go crazy. You'll yeah. you'll go crazy, and then yeah. you'll die. Yeah, eventually. and it doesn't take long. Yeah, a few months. So they really only, you know, a functioning army only has their guys out there for about a week, then they bring them back in, let them rest, because they never really sleep during that week. They'll sleep a little bit, but not much. It's kind of so interesting, though, and one of the main things that's kind of always interested me—not just about dreams and nightmares, but also just about sleep as a concept—is yeah. that. In the wild, animals in the wild, you can't really, I mean, depending on what kind of animal you are, obviously, um, but you can't really afford to just go unconscious no. for eight to ten hours a day, like, because you'll just get eaten, right? Bur burrowing animals do it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if you have somewhere where you're safe and, like, yeah. you know, other, like, predators can't get to you. Yeah, but snakes go in there and get them, too. Well, that's true. So there's, so it's almost kind of like, really safe. so it's really weird to think, like, how you know, from an evolutionary standpoint, like how we developed this need because you do need to sleep and you need yeah. quality sleep yeah. and you do need quite a lot of it or you're going to have a bad time. Um, the fact that you can just go completely like insensible yeah. for eight to 10 hours a day or, you know, I guess six to 10 hours would be more accurate um, that you can just do that is crazy how that would have evolved. I mean, obviously it did because yeah. here we are. But ha I don't know. It's like why? Because that seems like it would be um, maladaptive. Does it not? Yeah, but the human brain is very costly in terms of that's true, energy. and it it has to recharge because it's it's burning up a lot of energy. 
Yeah, not just your brain, but your body muscles yeah. too. Like that's one because right. you know Tom always says that too when he's because he's always talking about working out and stuff. He's like, it's not the actual working out that makes no. you grow. It's actually like the you're sleeping, sleeping and, and like eating. the recovering and yeah, eating from it afterward. From. Yeah, if I actually work out less, I get bigger. If you work out too much, you'll actually get smaller. Yeah, Especially, because all you're yeah. doing is triggering your body. Your body's building responses. To yeah. So you, right, and then and then you have to rest so yeah. it can heal up because that's when all of your growth happens. It's not during the actual yeah. weightlifting; it's when you're recovering from yeah. the weightlifting. Yeah, I, I missed a lot of pounds. I lost, you know, uh, there, there were pounds I could have gained over the years for not eating enough, forgetting to eat. You got to eat too. Yeah. Yeah. Eat quality. Because well, I mean, you're like me. It's like if I you get that much. if you get involved, yeah, we don't yeah. really eat all that much. And like if we get involved in something, like if I'm involved, like I'm writing a story or I'm yeah. doing something, or if he's like working on the car, I'll forget like to eat. Yeah. like we won't eat, and it'll be like four o'clock, and then we're yeah. just like, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. I had a cup of coffee today, and that's yeah. all. But I won't like feel particularly hungry. You know what I mean? Sleeping and eating. Yeah. But don't just think you can sit on your ass, sleep and eat, and get get like me. You're gonna have to work out. You yeah, do you do. Things. You just don't have to do it as much you as you think. You just don't do as much as you think. I only think. work out fucking twice a week. Yeah, yeah, same. The rest of it is sleeping and eating. Yeah. And like I said, I don't even, well, honestly, I can't eat that much Yeah. at one time. Like, I start feeling ill, so, you know what I mean, if I eat too much at one time. Yeah. But that's the thing. So your brain is kind of the same. Yeah. And because our brains are so complex, and like I said, because our brains burn so many calories because of all the shit that they have to do, you know, thanks, brain. Um... You know, I guess it needs that much sleep because if you don't get enough sleep, it f- it fucks your shit up big time. And yeah. you kind of need a lot of sleep. And I kind of feel like modern people, they t- and they tell you this all the time too. It's like, don't go on your phone before you go to sleep. Don't be playing video games, like limit screen time and stuff like that because that shit will keep you awake. And even if you don't feel like you're awake, like you're you're not getting quality sleep and you're just going to be tired all the time. And if you keep doing that, then it's going to fuck up your health. In classic U.S. Army Ranger School, Ranger candidate got about three broken hours of sleep a day. I on, would not, I could not function. On one MRE a day. No while way. they're running combat patrols. Cause, but the idea there of Ranger School was not to make you a better soldier or anything like that, or to give you special fucking ninja skills like you think of in the movie. The idea... Ranger School is about trying to make you quit. They, they want dudes that'll walk themselves to death, can process information while they're fucking starving and fucking on no sleep. Just extreme exhaustion. They want guys that are kamikazes and fucking crazy. And people that have a lot of willpower. They want it that bad. They're not real high quality fucking... <laughs> when they're done, they're just mean and they're dudes you can trust. You can say, fucking, I want this done. I'm going to do it. Uh, we'll get it done, and they'll die doing it. That's all. That's, well, that's he's all just been pared down to just that. Just yeah, I'll do it. Right. To and just now, that. There's nothing else. Yeah. Everything so, else has been winnowed away. Yeah. The only guys <laughs> that are fucking hardcore extremists, you know. Which I always it's funny when they say, "Oh, it's extreme." These are, these extremists. Shit, that was the fucking life we lived. Lived extremism. <laughs> well, like you said, they're trying to get. They're trying to. Get people to quit because they yeah. don't need the people. If you're that quit, don't. then you can you can never be a rager. Then you can't ever. hack it, right? Yeah, uh, they just want the people that can hack it. They want somebody to walk right into a machine gun fire if they have to, because their missions are important and they get the mission done. And people, other guys in the army get spared. They, you know what I mean? That was the idea. Like if you have a very high priority target uh, that that the infantry could take, you're gonna you send rangers. But the, the battlefield has changed. It's not quite the way it was, but still. They just want dudes that are kind of kamikazes. Skull people. And they come out weaker. They look like fucking lost a lot of weight. They look like they came out of a concentration camp. But you can trust them. That, that's all they care about. You can trust them. They don't quit. Well, you need about three hours. And they're doing ex, ex, fucking exceedingly strenuous physical labor. But still, it breaks them down. they Ninety days. Well, later, yeah, I mean, they, humans lost... are just humans. Yeah. Like, obviously, there's a spectrum, and some people have yeah. a lot more willpower and a lot yeah. more stamina and a lot more that than others. But you know, you're just a person. You're not a yeah. super person, and it's like after a while, it's gonna yeah. get you too. Yeah, they just like I said, they want a guy that will walk themselves to death and just do it. That's what they're looking for. It's a psychological thing that they're looking for: the ability to just run themselves. But it's about three hours. 
and broke three broken hours of sleep a day, you can live. You you're gonna be fucked up, and you and your and your uh your IQ isn't gonna be normal. Well, yeah, your Very your brain test. function yeah. your brain yeah. function is um really depleted. Yeah. Very basic tasks to run combat patrols and doing defense and offense. If you could all write it down in a few pages, but that shit's hard to do when you're fucking exhausted and haven't slept, and it's in the middle of the night and it's fucking pouring cold, and you just you don't want to be there. You're really just you're 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 disassociating from your own body. You're losing track of time, you know. And the 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 judges are who the the, the ranger cadres that are there. They're well slept, you know. They're and you know they're fresh. They're just kind of evaluating how these guys are behaving under physical extremes, physical and mental extremes. They're gonna choose who's who's gonna make it, and who's not gonna make it. And then there's these little tasks that you have to do and remember, and everybody's got to know everybody else's job. It would be very basic if you were to write it all down. A college student would laugh at it, but most of those college students couldn't do it because they just don't have the. <laughs> the physical fortitude of just <laughs> there's no way to describe it. The will it's all it's a battle of willpower. Okay. But you gotta have sleep. When those guys are towards the end of their school, they're not they're they're dumber. Because <laughs> their brains are fucking fried from lack of sleep and <laughs> lack of food. It comes back. You know, they but temporarily you're fucking dumb. But you can trust that guy. Because uh, in extreme circumstances, he's reliable, you know. Well, hell, I was just awake for 50 hours one time and started to hallucinate. Yeah, so. I've hallucinated a lot during in those, in those That's times. That's what I mean. So like I said, it doesn't take that long. You miss, I missed one and a half nights of sleep and started hallucinating. Yeah. Not bad. Like, I still knew I was hallucinating because I was like, wait, that shit's not real, right? But yeah. you know what I mean? It's So it just goes to show... Yeah, uh, it doesn't take that long for shit to start fucking with you yeah, if you don't yeah. get enough sleep. And sleep is know, very, very important. Yeah, they're looking for guys that can continue to function even though they're doing that. Which, like I said, that's, very rare. that's a very, yeah. Very, yeah. Because humans are just not built to yeah. operate under those conditions. Right. Uh, Tammy said, I heard that's why there are morning people and night owls. So when one group slept, another kept watch for danger. That actually does kind of make sense. Um I'm not even really sure. I'm definitely not a morning person. That's that would for probably sure. only make sense if if you have tribal people in a village. Well, yeah, but that's what she's yeah, talking about. That's right. kind of why that evolved, because that's you know what a large portion of our a war party uh, or a history hunt- was spent a war, as a war party or a hunting party. Everybody's got to be awake. Everybody's got to be awake pretty much all the time at a war party. They were probably like that back then. I'm sure they, they the Aztecs ambushed each other and shit. <laughs> why they were sleeping probably pretty common the weird thing is that i kind of feel like i'm not a morning person but i find myself waking up early in the morning anyway i guess yeah. just because i'm used to waking up for work all the time even though i'm not happy about it and i like to stay up late but i find that the older i get i can't stay up late anymore you know because i woke up early in the morning so usually yeah. by like 10 or 11 o'clock at night i'm like mm-hmm. i'm like starting to doze off you know what i mean yeah. But I hate doing that. It's like I like to stay up late because I feel like I'm missing stuff. You know what I mean? When I didn't have to get up early, like when I was in college and had late classes and stuff like that, I would stay up till like 3 or 4 in the morning, like easy. And I just sleep till 9 or 10 the next day. And I worked the night shift for some time, and that actually worked out really well. But, you know, what are you going to do? Um, all right, so where was I? So, yeah, so we were talking about... Um, where the word mayor came from and how it comes from a root meaning essentially like crushing or oppression. Like I said, something sitting on you. Now here's maybe where the association, I don't know if this is exactly where the association came from because language is complicated, but the mayor demons were said one of the things that they would do among the many things that they would do was they would kind of come to your shit they'd come to your homestead or whatever and they'd ride all your horses at night you know what i mean and then like so the next morning your horses would be all like all worn out and sweaty and shit like that and you'd be like what the hell was going on with that that's why the mayor riding all your horses yeah the mayor demon was there but like i said it doesn't have anything it's it's putting yeah exactly (laughs) another thing that at, at least in um kind of norwegian 
uh, Icelandic sort of folklore was that another thing that the mare would do was that they would either tangle up the horse's mane or if, it, if they were riding a person, then they would tangle up the person's hair. You know what I mean? So that was kind of a whole thing too. And that seems specific to that culture. And like I said, I maybe that's where the association between nightmare and like the word mare having to do with a horse. I'm not really sure. Um, and there's even a thing too. It wasn't just hair, but there's specific kind of trees in that part of the world where the branches are kind of tangly looking. And even those trees are called like mare pines or nightmare pines or something like that because of the because of the idea that this witch or whatever it was was like tangling shit that was the one thing that they did so these mares like i said they were usually even though you see them portrayed like sometimes like in the henry fuseli painting it looks like a little it's, i don't it's not a male or female it's just a little goblin looking thing um but most of the time it's portrayed as like a witch or a hag or something like that so one of the things is the witches and sometimes they were shape shifters and one thing too and this is kind of different well like we'll kind of get into like the different um you know iterations of it like in different cultures because sometimes it seems like the dream demon if you want to call it that um was like its own distinct thing like a ghost or some shit which is kind of where more asia went with it like a ghost thing and also kind of mexico but um most of the other ones were like it was a witch but it wasn't like she was a witch and she was in her witch house and then she would cast out her soul or whatever. You know what I mean? Like her, so she would send it, but her body would still be at her witch house, right? But she would just send this out to like sit on people's chests and fuck with them, you know? So that's, so that's kind of a difference too. Um, whether the person was like a living witch that could send their spirit out at night to fuck with people or whether it was like an actual dead person or like a ghost or something like that. But it's still like a similar thing, but that was kind of a distinction that I noticed like in some kind of different uh, cultures. So these witches, at least in this uh, part of the world, would send their spirits out and these spirits could also shape shift. Usually, you know, like cats or frogs or, or horses, uh, you know, that would work too. Sometimes even insects, like they could morph into wasps and stuff. If you wanted to be extra, <laughs> extra shitty, I'm going to be like a fucking plague of wasps, like coming in your house. So the earliest written uh, account that they have, account, legend that they have about a mare. And obviously the stories are a lot older than this, but this is the first written one, the oldest written one that they have. It comes from the 13th century, and this is a Norse saga. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce like the name of the saga, but it's a Norse saga from the 13th century. What happens in this story is that there's a Norse king named, uh, again, I'm gonna attempt to pronounce this, Van Landi Sveigoysen, Sveigoysen? Something like that, I'm sure that's wrong. So he's a king and he's married to this woman named Drifa or Dreyfa. Now, he says to her, honey, I'm, I'm making this up. He says to her, honey, I'm going to go out and do God knows what. Um, I promise, pinky swear, I will be back in three years. Like, he's going off on some campaign or some shit. You know what that means. He's yeah. a king. You know what they do. It's Viking shit. So, he says he's going to go, he's going to be back in three years. Spoiler alert, he did not come back in three years. Now, fair play to Drifa. She's mad. But she waited for his dumb ass. Yeah. Seven more years. How many children did she have? When oh, she I don't know. All right. And he still didn't show up. All right. So she gave him ten fucking years, okay? All right, yeah. All right, so don't get mad. She don't don't hate. She dead, huh? No. Yeah. She knew he was out doing some shit. Okay. And she wasn't happy about That's it. That's how hardcore he was. Now, I should also add that Drifa was also a sorceress. Okay. One, don't piss off your wife. Two, especially don't piss off your wife if she's a sorceress. Yeah. Because what she did was she actually conjured a mare, a demon, to go and find his ass. Okay. And again, fair play to her. The first thing she said, go find him and lure him back to me. Okay, so that's yeah. nice. 
if you can't lure him back to me, then you can kill him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, if he's cheating, I'll be killing him. That's, 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 right. That's so talking. I was like, she gave him every yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Every opportunity. Yeah. So don't hate. Just saying. He had this coming. So what ended up happening? So she conjures the mare, the dream demon witch. And she goes and finds his ass. He falls asleep. And she jumps on his legs at first. And so the dudes, I guess like all his dudes that were with him, whatever, his little convoy, um, they're like, oh no, what are we going to do? And like, they're trying to like save him, like wake him up or whatever. But while the, the mare was like on his legs, she actually sat on his legs so hard that she broke them. And then the dudes were like, oh no. And then they ran down to the legs at which point the mayor runs up and sits on the dude's head yeah. and suffocates him to death. Okay, yeah. So that's... he not come back? Huh? Because he wouldn't come back? Yeah. Did you say? Did, did it say why he wouldn't come back? Not that I know of. Oh. I mean, that might have been in the whole saga, but right. you know what I mean? That's just kind of like a summary of it. Yeah. So, but he, like I said, he promised his wife, hey, I'll be back in three years. And she was like, okay, honey, I'll see you then or whatever. And then, yeah. but then, like I said... He didn't come back. And she's like, wow, it's been three years. Yeah. He's not back. She gave him another seven fucking years. She gave yeah. him like all that time and he still didn't come back. So she's like, all right, fuck this bitch. I'm going to like, I'm going to mess him up. Yeah. Well, there were these other chicks. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, there were these other chicks. I, I feel like that's, that's what, probably the implication. That's what it was. Yeah. That's the implication. Well, like I said, that's what happens though. You marry a sorceress and then you fuck her over like that. Yeah. You had that coming, buddy. Yeah. Sorry. But that's kind of the first, um, <laughs> that's kind of the first written, uh, legend. The, you know, obviously the you know the the legend is a lot older than that but that's the oldest one that they have that's written down and that's actually from from like a norse saga but i just thought that was like pretty funny so i thought that <laughs> that she had like this bear sit on him and like fucking... don't think you can skip out on your woman she come with she'll come get you that's what i mean like especially i said especially... she's a sorcerer yeah it's like it's, yeah. that dude was like stupid yeah i mean didn't, know about didn't anybody tell him nothing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Nobody told him nothing. Yeah. And like I said, and she gave him a lot of leeway. Yeah. It wasn't like she was just kind of like, oh, three years in one minute. Fuck that yeah. bitch. I'm going to go. You know, she gave him another seven years. And then she didn't even say, oh, go kill his ass. She said, well, try to bring him back to me. Yeah. But if he won't come, yeah. then you can kill him. You're right. So I think she was totally fair. <laughs> totally fair. But yeah. She was stepping out. But I'm sure she's she probably the bad guy. She didn't even make any stipulations, did she? No. Of like, uh, okay, just not just that I know sure of. You come back, right? Yeah. Yeah. And three years. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, how many women be like, okay, fine, see you in three years. Do whatever you want to do. Do all. Do well, I don't know if she said that, but but that's that was the implication. Do what you want to do. Just come back in three years. Allison says my hair looks like a nightmare. Let's type this because we were talking about one of the things that the mayor did in this part of the world was would tangle hair up like yeah. would tangle up horse manes or tangle up people's hair or whatever yeah um so there's also like kind of as a um sort sort of addition to there's there's kind of other folklore from this part of the world um which i think is they're called the the sammy they used to be called laplanders but they don't like to be called that anymore um their dream demon is actually like i said i don't know if it's a man or a woman some of them are just like demons they're just like sexless you know what i mean um, but theirs is actually like an elf and it's called a deaton, I guess. Yeah. And he can actually change into, or it can actually change into like a bird usually. And that also sits on your chest and gives you nightmares. Um, so it's kind of a similar thing, but where they have like a shape shifting apps aspect to it as well. Not all of the, not all cultures have that, but in this part of the world they do. Now, Poland has some pretty interesting ones. Now, theirs is also called a Mara or a Zamora, um, and it's kind of related to the same, because uh, they also have a goddess that's called a Mara that's like the, like the goddess of winter, who's also kind of a demon. I kind of feel like the cool thing about other mythologies, like other than Judeo-Christian mythologies, is that they're a lot more nuanced. Like a lot of their deities or, you know, uh, or legendary creatures are kind of like not all good or bad they're kind of just like people in that they could go either way which i kind of like that better because it kind of reflects the wor real world better so they kind of have a thing where their dream demon if you want to call it that is actually the soul of a person now this person doesn't have to be a dead person it could be a dead person but it could be a live person too um 
but somebody it's usually somebody who was a woman that sinned or somebody who had some sin done against them or somebody who died unbaptized or without confessing their sins or whatever um there's also kind of a thing where if you're the seventh daughter you could be a mayor um if when you're baptized they pronounced your name wrong that person could be a mayor too like their soul could be like it pops out and does the stuff it's not like the physical person um people with unibrows so frida kahlo um <laughs> Uh, people with different color, like, um, don't they call it dichromatic if you yeah. have two different colored Alenta eyes? That. Yeah. Oh, she does? I never noticed. Yeah. You ever notice that? Alenta's got a brown eye and a blue eye. I never noticed that. Yeah. Does she wear contacts? No. You just never noticed it. I guess I never looked close enough. Yeah. I mean, I always kind of thought, like, her eyes look, but I guess it never, yeah. like, occurred to me that that's you what know, it is. No, no, Alenta's my ex. They're, yeah, they're that's friends. A, yeah, 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 I know her. I've seen, yeah, I've seen yeah, but Alenta, I just really uh, never noticed that. Yeah, one, eye, one eye's light uh, brown. Kind of like a light brown, or you know, and the other one is uh, blue. Maybe because it's always I kind of see her in the dark. Yeah, yeah. and so I never really noticed. Yeah, I mean it's not always like I've seen she's come over and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I just for some reason I never noticed that. No, first time I saw this, I was like, oh, you're dichromatic. And she goes, oh, you know what that is? I said, yeah, yeah. You got a brown. He's got a brown and a blue one. Yeah, like David Bowie. Although yeah. I don't think he was born like that, was he? Yeah, he was. He's dichromatic. Oh, was he? I yeah, thought it was. I, a... I thought it was like an injury. It was, no, he's got a blue one and a green one. Well, I know that, one but... Of, one of them went blind. He got hit in the head, Peter Frank. Yeah, that's what I said. Head, yeah. But he, that's what I said. He wasn't born like that. No. He, but some people are born like that. No, he was born dichromatic. Oh. But then one of the eyes got blinded and it fucking um, uh, uh, permanently dilated the eye. I forgot which one it was. It was yeah. the blue one or the green one. Yeah. That's just funny. I never heard so, so, yeah, Bowie had weird eyes. They were different colors and uh, one of them was always dilated. Yeah. So uh, so by that by that um criteria, yeah. Aleda or David Bowie, yeah, could both be Mara. Yeah. Because it, you could be alive or dead, it doesn't matter. Like cuz it's just your spirit doing it, right? It's not your body. Um also, if a woman was engaged or betrothed to a guy, but he fucked off and married somebody else, um the rejected woman could also be a mare. Um so this mare also in Poland had a shape-shifting abilities, uh, could turn into frogs, cats, whatever. The weird thing about the Polish one, though, is that it could also be inanimate objects. Like it could turn into an apple, for example, or like a hunk of straw or something, or a ball of yarn. Which, wouldn't that be weird? Like you just kind of wake up and there's a ball of yarn on your chest, like giving you nightmare. Phantom said he's got three brown eyes. That's yeah. what the fuck. <laughs> stupid bitch <laughs> um but yeah per, uh, specifically in poland one of the things they um the mayor also had a like a vampire like aspect in the sense that it would drain people's blood or their energy like while they slept you know yeah. what i mean so you kind of some crossover which i feel like you kind of had in russian folklore too because or romanian folklore rather because um the uh maroi yeah. Which is kind of like a vampire was kind of associated with the dream demon type thing too. You know what I mean? So because it's kind of like the Roy a, sim- like a struggle. Kind of yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like a similar yeah. like a vampire ish something that's like sucking out your energy pretty yeah. much. Um, now interestingly, and this we'll see this across several cultures in Poland. Um, there's a bunch of ways that you can keep the mare from giving you bad dreams or fucking with you or whatever. Um, one of the things is taking their hat. I don't know why this is a thing, but across several cultures, many of which are seemingly unrelated, um, the mayor wears a hat of some kind. And if you take the hat, then either they'll stop fucking with you or in some cultures, they'll give you like a treasure, like a genie. To give it back? I don't even know if that's it, okay. but like if you're, I think the thing is like, if you're brave enough yeah. to like wake up and see this horrible thing sitting on your chest and be like, whoop, got your hat, got your hat, bitch. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, well shit. Now I have to give you like a million dollars, I guess. Yeah. I don't really know if that's what it is, but it's just weird because that's, there's a lot of stories like that across several different cultures, like that they have a hat on and well, if you witches, take it, witches have hats and shit. I guess, so, so, you know, I guess that's a whole like, thing. You take that witch's hat and then you get it. <laughs> <laughs> They're making and then stories. they have, and then they have to do what you say. Yeah, but yeah, funny. it's just it's just funny how across like it's white folks, white folks making <laughs> making the stories. 
It's not always white folks. <laughs> but it is usually white folks. White folks make us we come up with some weird shit. Yeah, we do. Um, Just sitting around a fire fucking telling these stories and making up fucking new dimensions to it. We come up with some good shit. I mean, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? We're just adding shit. We're, we're adding, adding shit to the folklore. To the fanfic. Uh, we're adding, adding some fanfic. What does it look like? Oh, he's got a dude and he got a hat and a hat. <laughs> What happens if you take her hat? Oh, if you take her hat. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, yeah. If you take her hat, you get a wish. Yeah. Yeah. Like she has to bring you like a gold yeah. bar or something. It's yeah. that kind of shit. Also, um, you can throw a piece of noose at the demon and that'll make it go away. I guess it yeah. can't just be like a random ass piece of rope. It has to actually be a noose. A noose, yeah. Like a piece like of a noose. Like a weapon. Yeah. And then um, another thing was it said sleeping with a scythe or a wedding belt. And I was like, is that what I think it is? Like a, like a, a chastity belt? That's what I was thinking. But I, I Googled it, and I couldn't get, like, everything was just coming up, like, hey, here's a belt for your wedding dress or a cummerbund yeah, for your yeah. tuxedo. I'm just like, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I thought it was a chastity belt, but I could be wrong. Maybe. That sounds like that sounds like an old-timey term for a chastity belt. Please tell me if you know what it is, but I'm just saying. Um, also, you can invite the demon for breakfast, which will um, make it stop doing what it's doing. Yeah. Or smear poop on your front door. Oh, well, shit. That'll get away. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. I kind of feel like that'll keep everybody away. So, yeah. you know what I mean. Um, so, there's that. Now, uh, so in Russia, particularly in the northwest and south part of Russia, uh, the Mara, they also have a Mara thing. And it's kind of like associated with another a house spirit that they have, which is called a Kikimora, which is a female house spirit. And as I said, this, it doesn't have to be like a bad or good. It's just a spirit and it lives in your house, usually lives behind the stove or in the basement. Um, and if the person that owns the house is a shithead, then the spirit would also be a shithead. But if it's a good person, then it'll be a good spirit. You know what I mean? Um, and she basically is the one that causes nightmares is usually invisible, but when she is visible, like I said, she lives behind the stove and stuff and makes little mouse sounds. So, like, you leave food out for her. So there's that. Um, but she's usually portrayed as, like, a black woman with big, long, shaggy hair. She just, like, sits there and combs it. You know what I mean? Like, the when she's sitting on you, I'm presuming. Um, and by a similar token, uh, the Croatian version, uh, they have this, something called a mora, which is the same word for nightmare as far as I know. Um, this is also like a dark spirit, but this one kind of has like an incubus, succubus, well actually succubus, um, kind of vibe to it because it appears as a beautiful woman and then shows up in dude's dreams and being like, Hey, like, don't you want me? Blah, blah, blah. And then like kills them. So there's that too. Um, but like I said, they're in some cultures, it's not, it's usually a woman, but not always like sometimes it's like a not gender specific you know what i mean so some other common things about this type of mora is that it usually comes through the keyhole and sits on the person's chest and tries to strangle them and interestingly a lot of the words in you know the this dialect in the croatian language um words having to do with kill torture bother strangle are from the same root as Mora, you know what I mean? Which is like a nightmare. So it's kind of the same thing, which like I said, everybody's talking about sleep paralysis. They have to be. Because yeah. everybody's describing the same sensation of something sitting on your chest and trying to strangle you or you can't breathe yeah. or something like that and associating it with nightmares. So I, I don't know, I just like thought that was really interesting. Well, having it happen to myself, waking up like something's suffocating you, I, that happens to me. Although I know it's not a demon. I know it's like uh, allergies. Yeah, but back then they <laughs> back probably then they wouldn't have known that, that. That, that. That someone was trying to strangle them in their sleep. So I can, I can see it. Yeah, and I and because that's such a universal human experience, you can see why so many different cultures have this very specific yeah. kind of story where it's like something sitting on my chest trying to strangle me or trying to suffocate me. Yeah. Because people wake up feeling like that. And if you didn't know what was causing it, because, you know, back then, every, like anything, anything bad happened where people like demons, you know what I mean? I'm just like a natural, genetically predisposed nose breather. I want to <laughs> sleep and breathe through my nose. I do, too. That's why yeah. I can't stand having a cold and trying yeah. to sleep. because I don't. stuffing it up and I got to breathe through my mouth, it'll wake me up. I feel like I can't breathe. 
Yeah, because, well, well I can't do that because my mouth will dry out. My mouth dries out yeah. anyway, even if I sleep with it closed. I'm just so. not a mouth breather. No, me neither. <laughs> I'm really not. Like I said, I have real bad, like, cotton mouth. And yeah. even if I sleep with my mouth closed all night, even when I wake up, my, like, throat and stuff will still be really dry. Yeah. So I, I feel really. Like I can't get any breath, and I'll yeah. be breathing deeply through my mouth. And it still feels like I can't get a breath because I'm not drinking. I'm not breathing through my nose. Right. Which is kind of happening right now. Allison says. I took my allergy pills. And yeah. It still hasn't. Allison said David Bowie can sit on my chest anytime. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, okay. sure. Yeah, most Yeah, I mean, if, if David Bowie wants to be, especially in the labyrinth outfit. Especially if he's in the Jareth pants. That's yeah, what I mean, yeah. yeah. With that hair. With, that with the hair wig, and with stuff. The hair, yeah. And the, ma- and the, and the yeah. eye makeup and, and stuff. He was like 45, I think, when that in that one, wasn't he? He wasn't a young man. Man, many many girls yeah. of my age running after this forty five year old. That was kind of like crystal ball and shit. Sure. Yeah. But that was kind of like the our kind of sexual awakening, I guess. Although well, that's I what that movie was about. Well, it was big time. Yeah, that was the labyrinth she was going through. Which, like I said, is Did kind she of want the bad bad boy or the baby. Yeah. She was looking for the baby. Yeah. I and you know what? Even when I saw that movie, I mean, I was I'm yeah. about the same age as Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. So I think she's maybe a year older or a year younger. She was so cute in that movie. She really was. Yeah. And um, so I was kind of like relating to the shit. She's a little infantile in that movie, uh, slightly. Yeah, but well, they're, in the beginning. They're, they're, yeah, they're trying to show her she's like immature. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, in the beginning. And she the end, she's grows a woman. up. She's a right. woman, yeah. Yeah. But it's just kind of, fa- I feel like um, so many girls of that age and maybe a little bit younger kind of came into some kind of... Uh, I don't even know if I want to call it like sexual awakening, but that kind of like stirred some feelings in you for sure. Yeah. And the thing about it it's is that pants. it, yeah, it was these <laughs> pants. I mean, I mean, if you watch it now, I saw my baby <laughs> crying hard as babe can cry. Oh, it's funny because I've seen like some some people that are my age that haven't seen it in a long time. Like they saw it when they were kids, but then they hadn't seen it for 20, 30 years, whatever. And then they go back and watch it. They're like, holy shit, I can't believe I watched this when I was a kid because it's like so obvious yeah. that that's what it is when you see it when you're older. But like when you're a teenager, it doesn't really register as problematic in any way. You know what I mean? Even though he's obviously Allison says she got way... a good glimpse of those boots that sexy. Yeah, it's sexy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he just got well, those yeah, today. That's $350 worth of sexy. <laughs> That's the best kind of sexy, yeah. <laughs> the three hundred fifty dollar kind. They actually look like uh, the boots from the Klingon Empire, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have any laces; it's just straps and these big fucking square, big. Here, let me see. If I... They got these plates yeah. here that hold them together. Huge sole, all handmade. Yeah, they last for fucking ever. Like I said, they're very nice. New Rock. Yeah, rocks. New Rock has been around. Since 1929. Yeah. That's an old Spanish They company. make good shit. Yeah. They're expensive, but like I said, they last for You only have to buy them for, once. They last forever. I got some in there that are fucking about 16 years old. They look brand new. Yep. And they can be repaired because it's all high quality leather. You send it to a shoe place and they'll go, oh yeah, okay, and they can fix and it. And they'll fix it, yeah. <laughs> I just never, I usually buy demonias, which are kind of like the... Women should buy demonia. Because they need a lot of shoes. You need variety. I mean, demonias aren't cheap, but they're not super expensive either. And they don't last that long. They they last a few years. A couple well, it depends. If, a Depen- girl- if you dance your ass off in them, yeah, they're not going to last that long. Yeah, especially if it's that same pair over and over again. Right. But a woman like Jen has got fucking 20 different pairs of demonias. She doesn't wear them all the time. She might, you know, she's rotating them. Well, I rotate them out, yeah. So, you know, that, that might last, that'll last her a long time. But yeah, I have had guy, pairs. A guy that only needs like two pair of yeah. fucking cool boots. So you might yeah. as well spend a so lot just, of money. So just, yeah. That. We don't need as much variety. Yeah, no one's looking at you like... Yeah, they're not looking at something just all black, you know. Right, they're like, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah that looks good. <laughs> you want something that... Can nobody's sleep. nobody's like, when like when girls go out, it's like, didn't you wear those bits last night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like that. For, you just want a real dependable... We're not that bitchy. Real dependable boots that just last forever and get better. So put get gets expensive ones. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, let's see where was I? Okay. So uh, by the same token, like I said, the the mayor or the mora or the mara or whatever you want to call it, which is kind of all the same thing, like across several cultures. Um, obviously, kind of 
you know, uh, ties right into what they would call the night hag or just the hag or the old hag or whatever. Um, this is kind of the same thing that they're talking about, but it's just kind of like a more recent thing. And I kind of feel like this is, you know, just a different iteration of the same being. Like I said, it's usually like an old lady, like a witch kind of thing. And it's somebody that sits on your chest or at the foot of your bed and gives you nightmares. Now, in certain parts of Canada and certain parts of the U.S., like usually like the southern U.S., um, they do kind of call it uh, hag-ridden. You know, I've heard that term used a lot. Hag-ridden or witch-ridden, uh, which, like I said, it's the same kind of thing. You just have this lady, like this old lady sitting on your fucking chest doing this kind of shit. Uh, one interesting thing, uh, it, particularly in this, like in the American South and in parts of Canada and stuff, I kind of feel like one thing that maybe turns up in this part of the world that maybe not in other ones is that sometimes if you have an episode of being hag ridden, it means that something bad is going to happen. Like it's an, like it's a bad omen. Um, and I don't think that that's, um, what? No, they keep talking about the boots. I got a photograph. I'll show it to him. Go ahead. When, when you time. You don't think what? Man, I fucking accidentally turned my shit up. Go ahead. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of the only, uh, specific thing, uh, specific, like, instance of that that I saw, where, where you s having this experience of having, of having the witch on your chest, not only was horrifying in the moment, but also, like, meant that something bad was going to happen, like it was a bad omen. Um, there's also kind of a thing where in, uh, Fiji, they call it being eaten by the demon, and specifically, they, their demons are usually the spirit of a dead relative of the person, which, again, that's a very specific thing to that part of the world, um, and that this spirit has come back to, like, tell you some shit, like, they, they have some unfinished business or something. And so if you have this happen, then usually one of the things that you have to do is you have to figure out, like, what this person wants from you, you know what I mean? So it's not so much a witch as, like, a ghost, kind of. That's, that's the boot. That's what I got on. That, that's the factory picture of it. Yeah. You can get them on Amazon. Like I said, they're about three fifty. But like I, you only have to buy them once, though. Okay. All right. So, okay, where was I? All right, so... um. This was kind of an interesting variation, too. And again, this is kind of going back to, like, what we should said about the hats. So this is specific to Albania. And they have something called a mokfi, I guess is how you pronounce it. And this is not a woman. It's actually specifically a male demon or a male spirit. And he has a gold fez. He wears a gold fez, and he usually only appears to women. Uh, which, so like I said, I don't even know if it's like so much an incubus thing. But again, like I mentioned earlier, if you can take his fez, then he'll give you a wish. Now this specific Albanian version is not harmful. So I don't know if he, I, you know, I, I feel like he doesn't do as bad a shit as like the other demons and shit do. Like he just maybe doesn't give you nightmares or something. He just comes and like shows up in your chest like, hey... Here I'm with my gold fez. Hey, if you take my hat, I'll give you a wish or whatever. So maybe he's still scary because otherwise you'd just go boop. But you know what I mean? So maybe he's like scary. But I thought that was like kind of funny because the whole taking the hat thing, I was just like, that's so specific. That's so odd that like so many different cultures have that. Um, but yeah, so same kind of thing. Uh, in the Middle East specifically, and this is probably not a surprise, a lot of the, they have a lot of similar stories about you know spirits that sit on your chest and like you can take their hat and shit but a lot of them are gin gin yeah. you know what i mean um it's it comes from the gin thing which like i said should not be a surprise because that's kind of a very common thing there um but even in asia they have very specific although in asia i noticed that their stuff is usually almost always specifically a ghost like in um chinese the words that they have for this nightmare demon um, means, like, ghost pressing on body. 
that's what it means. So it's like, so it's a dead person or like some kind of spirit. It's not so much a hag or anything. Um, they also have a story that, cause you know how in Chinese folklore, and I feel like in Japanese folklore too, they have like a lot of stuff about spirit, like women that turn into foxes and all that kind of stuff. Um, in specifically in Eastern Chinese folklore, um, they actually have a thing where mice come up on your chest and steal your breath, which will make them turn into a human for a little bit. And I kind of feel like, and I don't know where this, um, where this folklore comes from, like what part of the world, but I kind of feel like, isn't there like old wives tales? And this might be from Europe or like some parts of the United States or whatever, that cats do that, that cats like jump up on your chest and steal your breath, which like I said, and I don't, that's not crazy that people would think that because you know, we have cats obviously. And um, they do like to jump up on your chest while you're sleeping. They're not stealing your breath or anything. They're just kind of sitting there going, hey, what are you doing? Why don't you wake up and feed me? That's like all they're doing. But, or they're lonely or whatever, because Pookie does that to him all the time. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and look over and she's just like sitting there like looking at his face. But um, but yeah, so the mouse thing, maybe people just saw that happen with the mouse and they were just kind of like, oh my God, it's stealing their breath. Which I, I get it. But like I said, I kind of feel like that was the first time I ever heard of it with mice. I heard of it with cats, that cats were stealing people's breath. I think that even in that Stephen King movie, Cat's Eye, I think they even um, addressed that old wives' tale, like about the cat stealing your breath. Yeah, Oracle had said, uh, yeah, I've heard the breath-stealing myth about cats too. Yeah, that's, it seemed like, and like I said, I, I, I completely understand where that comes from, because cats absolutely do jump on you when you're sleeping. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, so I could see how people would think that, if they didn't like cats particularly. Um, but yeah, so uh, like I said, in the same kind of thing, like, um, in Asian cultures, it does seem to be more either animals or ghosts, but they do seem to have the same thing about pressing or, you know, something like sitting on your chest or pressing on you or keep you, keeping you from breathing. Um, same kind of thing in Mongolia, except their thing is more, I don't even know if it's so much a spirit there it's i mean it kind of is but there theirs is kind of like a little bit more amorphous where they're talking about well you're being like pressed down by something but it's more like a shadow or like like evil personified like it's the darkness like pressing down on you that's like making you have nightmares so there's that kind of thing now here's kind of an interesting thing i wanted to bring up because in um cambodia and laos and uh thailand um they have specific their shit's more ghostly too. And it's usually kind of like you wake up and there's all these like figures standing around and like someone like holds you down or whatever and you can't move or like scream or anything like that. Um, so specifically, and maybe some people know this, Wes Craven uh, to write Nightmare on Elm Street. Maybe people don't know this. You know, it's, it's a little glib to say it was based on a true story. But he did get the idea from a real thing that happened in the early 1980s. And something that happened, there were these Southeast Asian immigrants um, who were kind of mostly like fleeing the Vietnam War. And they had this specific syndrome, which I've seen called SANS, um, you know, sudden uh, arrhythmic death syndrome. And the weird thing about it is that um, these people, they came and they were refugees and they were like in this camp or whatever. And all of them, except one were men and they were all young. I mean, they were twenties, thirties, um, you know, 40, and they were all in good health. And a bunch of them, I think it was 117 of them died in their sleep for no specific reason. And they are not entirely sure. I mean, it's, kind of a weird story and we could probably do like a whole show on it but they i think that wes craven read the story about that and it's almost kind of like because i think the media at the time was kind of saying it's like oh they you know had horrible nightmares and it scared them to death like while they were sleeping which is possible i guess but he that's where he got the idea for nightmare on elm street from was from these 117 healthy people who just died in their sleep for seemingly no reason at all as though... Where did this happen again? It was, well, it was, um... They were Hmong refugees. 
Okay. And they um, had they were refugees. Where were they? I can't even remember where they went to. What if this but, actually happened? No, it did. It did happen. Yeah, it's very well documented. It must have been some kind of virus. Or no, something. but no, because they've they've studied it. Yeah. Like extensively. Oh, we got to do a show on that. That's what I told you. Like, yeah. yeah. And it was such a weird story. Like I said, I, I kind of feel like like super horror nerds like me like know about it because I heard about it because of West because of Wes Craven talking about it. Well, they did say that it's like because that might play into it because they said you know people from this part of the world and especially from this culture did have very specific um, folklore about dream demons like yeah. sitting on your chest and like sucking out your breath or you know killing you or whatever and it could be that when these specific people were put in this like play they were like refugees they were under a lot of stress and stuff like that and maybe they were going like through some other shit and it just kind of overwhelmed them and because they believed that so strongly that it might have actually killed them it's just kind of like how you know how they say that you know people that really believe in voodoo for example yeah they can really um that you can really kill people that way like if you believe something strong enough that um that it will actually kill some like if you curse them like obviously you know if somebody cursed me it probably wouldn't work because i don't believe it but if somebody really does believe it they do the number on themselves essentially because right. it's like psychosomatic so that's kind of the going theory for what happened with these people yeah that absolutely did happen it was like in all the it was very well documented they've done scientific studies on it like trying to figure out what happened to them and stuff like that because it was really really weird but um but yeah, so that's kind of the going theory for that now. That because they believed in that, in this sort of like, not necessarily hag ridden, but this kind of dream demon type of thing, that maybe because they were under so much stress, under such extraordinary circumstances like they were in, that it just killed them like while they were yeah. sleeping, which is kind of scary to think about. So like, don't believe in anything like that too hard or you might not wake up. You know what I mean? That's fucking, that's fucking scary. They actually projected themselves out of their bodies. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe so. Because they were afraid it was going to happen. <laughs> they willed themselves to death. Yeah. Through fear. You could do it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like that kind of sounds plausible to me. Yeah. If you grew up in a culture where that was a big part of the culture yeah. and you absolutely believe that with every fiber of your being, then yeah. Yeah. Well, animals can do it. Sure. You put an animal under enough psychological stress, they, they'll die. And, and no physical injury. They just die. They just yeah. will themselves to die. Yeah. They shut down. So that's yeah. what it was. They're doing that, probably. But like you said, you have to believe it. Yeah. Like I said, it's just like if somebody cursed you or something right, like yeah. that. It's like unless you like really wholeheartedly believed in it, I don't think it's going to do anything. Yeah, we were talking about... um because I, I think when you were in the bathroom when we were talking about like in Chinese folklore, they say like mice jump up on your chest and like steal your breath and then like turn into a human yeah. briefly and i said that i had heard a lot of folklore about cats doing that yeah i'm not really sure what part of the world that comes from but oracle said she'd heard that too there's a lot of uh folklore uh, there was modern folk folklore i grew up with my dad in california back in the 70s found a ferret and this is back before ferrets were common pets right he found a ferret at work he took it home it was, I thought it was a great pet. It Ferris actually cool. got out. It chewed its way through the, through the screen in the window and went next door to go play with the dog, the neighbor's dog, and the neighbor's dog killed it. Oh, no. Yeah, poor thing. It, it fucked me up when I was a kid. I was like, oh, because it was just a rare pet. That would pet. still fuck me up. You no, that's buy messed up. in the 70s yeah. in California. Aww. Well, the folklore of the time was is that, and the thing is, we took the shit seriously, that those couldn't be around children, that they'll, that they'll attack a baby in the crib. Yeah. Because it's like a weasel. There's, no, there's nothing to substantiate that. Nah. It's just that you, we were lower information back then. You, there was no internet you could go and check. And, you know, library probably would be very incomplete. So we, we kind of had inc we kind of had weird ideas about what animals could do. Yeah. And this is the 70s, the modern era. Yeah, I remember people saying weird shit like yeah, that. But, well, like, here's the thing. Okay, I mean, by on the other hand... It is true that you never know exactly what an animal is going to do. Yeah. Like when presented with different stimuli, like yeah. for example, a baby. Maybe they've never seen one before. You don't know. Yeah. He might bite its face. You don't know. Yeah. We also um, thought that well, it's a weasel. It's like a big weasel. It might kill the cat. You know what I mean? But that's not what happened. As soon as the as soon as it met the cat, the cat and the weasel, the cat, the ferret played. 
<laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I guess it would depend on the ferret and the cat. Like, yeah. but like maybe they wouldn't get no, along. The ferret loved the cat. The cat, yeah. our cat didn't like the ferret too much, but it didn't attack it. It was too big. Right. But the ferret just played with the cat. That's and, funny. And it, after a couple of days, of it, I was like, "Well, I guess the ferret is not going to kill the cat." But I don't think the ferret could have killed the cat. I just, you know, animals aren't really like that. You know, you see, wild, a pack of wild raccoons ran up on Beijing on our back deck. And Beijing didn't it? She was like, "What the fuck are these things?" What, what weird looking cat? Yeah, and she's like, <laughs> she "Wow!" Said. And the and the and the, look how pretty. Yeah, and the fucking the raccoons were loving on loving on her. They're like, "Oh, yeah, you're pretty yeah, too." Yeah, yeah, trying to pet her. What a weird wow. looking raccoon. <laughs> yeah, and these were wild raccoons. Yeah. <laughs> so you they know, hung I, out. I assumed that raccoons would try to attack and kill a cat. No. No, no, well, no. those ones didn't. No, they, and there was a whole pack of them. Yeah, no, they were just—they were, just thought she was interesting. Yeah, they were and like she thought trying, they was. Yeah. She thought they were. Yeah, interesting. And they were trying to pet on her. Yeah. Yeah, they were like, "What? Ooh, what? Yeah, yeah. What is this? She's thing? so fluffy." Yeah. <laughs> it's like, look at her tail. Yeah. It's like you. you so you know, tail. back in those days, we read into things, you know, kind of negative about the animals. You know. Well, and I've said this a lot of times. I think that animal, like I said, if if it's a wild animal, yeah, you can't never one hundred percent know how it's going to behave. But on the other hand, um, animals are a lot more intelligent than yeah. humans have usually given them. Yeah, we for. always thought that you couldn't keep a big cat like a lion or a tiger as a house pet. You would never really be able to trust it around humans. No, totally wrong. As long as it's got a habitat and it's being fed well, and you raise that. That um, do people in Russia have a shit ton of them right now, and they have videos of them on YouTube. Like, look at fucking uh, I am Puma is one one of the best ones about this fucking mountain lion. This guy owns a name Messi, and that mountain lion loves that dude. He's coming home from work. It's he's standing there in the fucking window watching him come out of the car from daddy. the second floor. Going, oh, oh, and, and yet and his just mama, like a regular cat. Going, like, Here comes much, daddy. Here comes larger. daddy. You know, yeah, that fucking. And who cat gets face. in bed with him. It's just like a house cat, even though that that's that could easily kill a human. But it's just like a house cat. Um, it's they're not wild animals. Well, know? if you and, raise it from a baby yeah. like that, like I said, I don't know if I'd ever one hundred percent trust it because it might have a bad day one day and just like smack your shit off. But I don't think it would kill you. Probably not. It, but uh, it just. But well, here's know. the here's the thing. Ancient Romans. Rich, an- rich ancient Romans kept lions in their houses as pets. Yeah. They didn't report anything strange, and they do they do that in India. I've seen <laughs> rich people in India with a fucking lion walk around the around the children and everything. And the lions just chill. Yeah, yeah, because it's it, ha- it has not been raised in a kill or be killed environment. It's, it's being fed. It's not wild. It's 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 a it, it thinks it's a human. Basically, so it's integrated into a human pride or a human pack yeah like i said i think animals like i said are a lot more intelligent and a lot more um, adaptable adaptable than like it like i said it depends on i wouldn't go out and catch one that was already grown no and try to keep that in the house that's That's, a different situation that's gonna end badly if they're hand raised around people they're very different yeah and if they haven't really had any experience with yeah, then they'll just they adapt lion, to whatever yeah, is the environment. Lions, tigers, chimpanzees, and house cats all playing together in the same fucking backyard. I've seen that. I'm like, this is fucking madness. There's nothing natural about this. You know what I mean? Those animals don't give a shit. They're being fed, and they're all friends. Yeah. It's not the same deal. And, like I said... And huge grizzly bears. Never believe that some grizzly bear would be that safe. That thing's fucking huge. The grizzly bear is just loving this man who's taking care of him, you know, just bizarre, but that's the way they really are. They're people like, well, of, all beings, yeah. if you, you know, I'm not going to say all beings cause that's look at what happened to grizzly man. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, but he called it. Yeah. He knew, which he knew what was going to happen. Him. He says, that but that's the thing. It's like, if yeah. you are around these animals all the time or they're around you all the time, and especially if you raise them, if you feed them, if you show them affection and stuff like that, it's just kind of like, part of your family. they're going to, yeah, reciprocate i feel like most of the time like yeah. i said you never know there's always going to be a wild card element yeah the, the things that i would trust the least would be like a chimpanzee like well yeah now because there have been stories yeah. like even chimpanzees that were raised by people 
Um, once they get to us, the male ones. The male ones. Once yeah. they get to a certain age, they will still absolutely tear your face off. Yeah. If they yeah. get upset. If so. they get mad. Um. So yeah, I I wouldn't trust those. No. Um. Too human like. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's yeah. The, the sad truth of that's that of truth. that matter. Yeah. Like I said, the female ones are usually okay. I haven't really heard of any um, female ones well, like flipping the out. But yeah, it's the male ones. Once they get past about eight years old, because yeah. like a lot of the ones that you see like in movies and stuff like that are younger, or they're yeah. females. Um, but I have read about ones that were like kind of famous that were in movies or on TV and stuff. And um, if they were males, once they got to be eight years old and went through puberty, um, they were uncontrollable. Yeah. You can't. I mean, and they would start biting people and trying to tear their arms off and yeah, shit like I that. Yeah, I would so. trust a gorilla, a male gorilla, over a male. Oh, I absolutely would too. A huge male gorilla is probably safer than a chimp. Uh, yeah. Well, they're a lot more chill gorillas. Yeah. I mean, they'll still fuck you up if you fuck with them, but if you they're not. Them, yeah. They're not really known for that. They're a lot more chill, even yeah. though they're much bigger. Um, well, they don't have to do anything to you. They can, they just, can just set you straight. Yeah. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Pop. But there's something about a chimpanzee. They're fucking satanic. Once they get the male chimpanzee, once he gets to a certain age, nah. Yeah, like I said, once they're about eight years old, yeah. they, they don't can't. see you as a as they know you're not a chimp, so therefore fuck you. That's the way they think. Yeah, they'll just tear your balls off, they'll tear yeah. your face off, they'll tear your arms off, and they absolutely can because they are much stronger yeah. than humans, even though they're smaller. Um, yeah. Let me see. Hold on. Uh, I saw Tammy said, yeah, they say never leave a cat alone with a baby. They'll steal their breath. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's a common. It comes from them actually licking milk off a baby's lips. Yeah, I heard that was where that came from, too. Yeah. And like I said, it's because, you know, and Pookie does it to him all the time. Yeah. Cats come up and sit on your chest, like when you're sleeping. Yes, to say, to say hi. Yeah, they're just trying to say hi. They want and attention. And once you wake up. Yeah, they want you to do something for them. Yeah. So they're just like, hey. Hey, yeah, no. <laughs> it's just it's that kind of thing. Yeah, they're not no stealing. threat to babies though. They're, no, not at all. Most kids we'd hear about it by now. I mean, most cats bad. seem to seem to like babies or yeah. don't care about the babies. Like yeah. they'll go and be like, "What is this little squirmy, stinky thing?" And then they're either like, "Oh, I love the baby," or "Yeah, fuck the baby," and yeah. they just don't think about it anymore. <laughs> That's dependent on the cat. Um, well, they but make yeah. a lot of noise. Well, yeah, and cats don't really like. They're like, "Oh yeah. man, are we really doing this right now?" Uh, Tammy says my female cat will every once in a while run up, bite me, and then run away. <laughs> so I don't think I would ever trust a big cat. We've never had the only time we've ever had the cats, but and nobody's ever bit me, bit me. Just kind of like if you pet them too much or they're overstimulated or you surprise them or something, they'll kind of just go eh, like not bite you to hurt yeah. you, but just be like, hey, stop it. Yeah, the, that big, that mountain lion does that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it, it does. It doesn't hurt you. It's just trying to tell you, yeah. hey, I don't like that. Just like, knock, knock that off. They're not yeah. trying to hurt you. The only time, like, Tom, like Beijing bit Tom years ago, but that was because she got scared. She was yeah. really scared. Like, she got a one of those um, a f- toys toy. that yeah. has like the string. It got wrapped and it got all wrapped around her leg, and she couldn't get it off. And Tom was trying to get it off, and it was she was flipping out like yeah, she was flipping underneath the bed. And I went to go put it off, and she bit me. And she bit, yeah. I was he trying had, to take it off her. Foot. He had to go to the hospital. Yeah, because got infected. That shit blew up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they well, but she didn't mean it. She was just like really scared. So yeah. So uh, let's see. Where was I? So. So like I said, all of these are kind of similar. Um, in the Philippines, I wanted to add that. In specifically, the thing that's sitting on your chest is a big fat woman. So there's that. Um, most yeah. of the other cultures don't say specifically that they're fat. Uh, also, this kind of made me laugh. There's a culture in South Asia, the Kashmiri uh, mythology. And their sleep paralysis or nightmares are caused by an invisible creature, which is called a Roche, I guess. A Roche or a Roche. And specifically this spirit is supposed to live in everybody's house so it's like in your house all the time but it only gets mad at you and attacks you and sits on your chest and gives you nightmares if you haven't cleaned the house which i thought was very funny that's just kind of like your your wife with that shit (laughs) you didn't clean this house and come to get you the roach is gonna come sit on you so i just said yeah it's in your house all the time and most of the time pretty chill and like you don't see her and stuff but it's like man this bathroom is filthy bitch i'm just gonna come here (laughs) you know what i mean it's that kind of thing so good thing you scare your wife with or you know uh men can clean too you yeah know? it's not a probably man. not from the culture of this cave well probably not but i'm just yeah. saying in probably in not. general yeah. you know if you have arms you can clean so uh you know now uh and obviously like i said some yeah generally muslim countries and stuff like that um 
is going to be caused by a djinn or sometimes like just Satan or their equivalent of Satan. Um, and sometimes it's like a possession issue also. And sometimes it's kind of like somebody else, like a witch or a shaman or something like that has caused some black magic and is like sent this thing to like do this shit to you. You know what I mean? So there was all of that. Let me see if I'm going to skip through like all of this kind of stuff. Cause this is all kind of similar. Um, I did see that in Catalonia, there was a figure, which is the same kind of thing, but it's called a Passanta and it's usually a big dog or a cat, but it's the same kind of thing, but it sits on your chest. So like an animal. So more like the weird thing about this particular animal though, is that it has like, it looks like a regular dog or a cat except big. But its paws are made of steel, but it has holes in it. Like, the, the steel paws have holes in them. I wonder what the holes do. I don't know. So I guess so it can't take anything from your house? Oh, I know. Or, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. It's really weird. Probably really went into another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then there's also, like, um, Sardinia, which is off of Italy. They have kind of a similar thing, too, but it's just kind of like his... Like, their um, version of it has seven hats on. And apparently you only have to take one of the hats. Damn. And then you get... And then it'll tell you, like, where some hidden treasure is. Yeah. So it's almost like a leprechaun type of shit. And, leprechaun and gin, there's some crossover there, isn't Yeah, it? that's what I'm saying. It's a, Like I said, every like every culture has a similar thing like this. Like, some yeah. kind of trickster spirit or something. And it's like, if you can outsmart it, yeah. it'll give you shit. Like, it'll give you wishes or treasure or something like that. Um, also, I thought this was kind of funny, and I had never heard this before. So anybody, because I know we have some uh, listeners that um, are from Mexico, um, their version of it is specifically a dead person. Like I said, it's not always. Sometimes it's a live person that sends their soul out of their body or whatever. But in Mexico, it's specifically a dead person, and it's a ghost. Um, and it sits on you, and you can't move. And apparently, this is referred to as, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to butcher the Spanish, um, subirse el muerto, dead person on you. <laughs> That's what they call it. And I don't know if you've ever heard this, but this is Brazilian. Yeah. So theirs is called, uh, pisa, pisadera, she who steps. Pisadera, stepper. Pisadera, yeah. Stepperette. Yeah. Yeah. Stepperette. That's Stepperet. what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Because he speaks Portuguese in yeah. case you didn't know. Um, so she's looks like a hag she's like a very tall very skinny woman like a witch she has like an evil laugh she has big long uh fingernails and big long dirty toenails okay. and she has big long like white tangled hair red eyes and green teeth and she actually kind of lurks over people's houses and if you go to bed on a full stomach she comes down there and like sits on you hmm. i guess so it's like you're not really supposed to do that Here's something that I found was interesting, too. And I, I guess there's been a lot of empirical studies that back this up. African-Americans are more predisposed to sleep paralysis, yeah. which I didn't really realize that. Well, it could be genetic. genetic. That, well, yeah, there is a genetic component to it, yeah, just yeah. like there is with sleepwalking, insomnia, yeah. like everything like that. Um, there is a genetic component, particularly yeah. with sleepwalking. That has a big yeah. genetic component because I've never done that. The genetic components to everything. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. But, well, yeah, but it's like a, you know, a, a yeah. larger, smaller yeah, right. percentage. But like I said, with sleepwalking and stuff like that, there's a pretty big genetic component yeah. to that. It's If you had family members that sleepwalk, then you probably will, too. People don't like to uh, consider human beings as animals, but I've, I'm an animal trainer and an ex-human trainer, military, law enforcement. Humans and animals are the same, very much the same. You know what I mean? There are different breeds of horses that have genetic propensities in them and it's the same with humans it's the same it can some of the shit is at, at the fam, family level too i think but it's very complicated whether or not genes are activated by your environment uh there some people say was it nature or is it nurture it's always both always always both and then part of the nurture process is culture culture is a product of of, of race and then then that race is kind of being, in a way, bred by the culture, almost like the culture is the hand of an animal breeder. And then it's kind of a, there's kind of a synergy between the two. That's why 
Japan is the way it is. That's why China is the way it is. Russia is a certain way. It's because of the people there and the culture, and then the culture reinforces Feeding the back people. Into, it's yeah. like a feedback loop. So America's different because it's kind of a patchwork quilt. It's not really a melting pot like people think it kind of is, but it's also not. It's also a patchwork of, of what they call uh, uh, what, what, pluralism. There's a lot of people who are different, but they can exist side by side in a common culture. Uh, which that's where diversity comes from. A lot of people get confused about diversity. They went, well, we're all diverse, so we're all the same. Well, no, if we're all the same, then there's now, now there's no diversity. What you need is you need plurality to where we can all be different together without killing each other. Well, yeah. America's I mean, like that. That's the ideal, isn't that's it? Really I mean, most, you, most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> is it perfect? No. No, but nothing ever no. is. Right, yeah. I think we've done an okay job. Yeah, we did better than than in other Considering. places. Considering. A lot of it has to do Could with, be better, sure. A lot of it has to do with the uh, America's uh, economically successful, so people aren't under enough as much pressure to where they have to turn on one another to get resources. Yeah, that's true. All right. In other places the resources aren't there, so that right. so, so people any, are turning in on so themselves. So anything is going to any you, um yeah, conflict is going to be exacerbated, exactly. even, sure. Tr- even tribes within the same race are turning on one another. Yeah, if, yeah. So a lot of it has to do with, like, environmental environment factors, right. sure. Well, and, you know, like you said, everything, that's why when we, we talk about this a lot, when we talk about serial killers and shows and stuff like that, it's just, like, that. I don't think there's any way to ever prize apart the uh, effects of genetics versus environment. Because yeah. it's just... They they reinforce each other. Yeah. Too there's like a there's just the it's two. too complicated. You can't ever say oh well they were born like that or or oh their upbringing or whatever yeah. because it's just there's no way to separate Western Western civilization. Yeah, our history and our culture will prove to you it's really Germanic is that humans can breed animals into any form they want them to. Got to pee. This has been going on for a long time. All right. So, humans can breed animals, but humans also breed other humans through mate selection and then the culture that kind of is encompassed in this thing also kind of reinforces the breeding. So, for instance, here's a good example. Like, Japanese culture makes sure, make sure that people become more Japanese over time. And China's kind of the same way. It'll change with technology, but you guys get what I'm getting at. It's your the the culture of a of, of a nation is kind of like the hand of an animal breeder. Okay, I see what else is going on. Tom fiddling with his boots. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that these things are exactly my size, but they're very high quality leather, and leather has to be. I I put some damn um uh goat lard into them and rubbed them to fucking get them to to what do you call it to condition the leather so things start to become more stretchy more more supple and then i also put them in hot water too to try to rehydrate the leather because they're slightly a little too tight they're not broken in yet so i gotta wear them now well, to get them ready for this weekend you just got them today yeah i just got them a few earlier on today so i'm trying to break them in <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So, okay. So let's get into a little bit. Here's something that I wanted to address because this was something that I found kind of interesting. So I feel like I kind of got interested in the similarities because there were so many similarities of people, um, you know, uh, having legends about very specifically a hag or some kind of demon sitting on your chest giving you nightmares. So I thought it was kind of interesting and I was just kind of like, well... What are some other universal um, images that a lot of people dream about? And so I kind of came into, and I think this is kind of a recent phenomenon. I'm not really sure how recent this phenomenon is, but you know the whole the whole old hag thing very common. Um, just people seeing kind of like shadow figures is very common. But one thing that's kind of come into the fore lately, especially in kind of like reddit posts and youtube and creepypastas and stuff like that is what they call the hat man or the man in the hat 
Now, this is supposedly something that a lot of people see in their nightmares and also in um, sleep paralysis episodes, which is generally kind of like a shadow person, I guess, but it's usually like a figure of a person very specifically with a hat on. Um, and it's usually they kind of have a trench coat or something like that. And one thing that a lot of people reported too was that it doesn't really do anything to you. It just kind of stands in the corner or by your bed and like looks at you. And another thing that a lot of people reported was that it didn't like disappear or anything like that, but it turned around and walked out the room like a person would. Which has led a lot of people to believe that maybe this is a real thing. I don't think this is a real thing. But it is kind of interesting how, like, why is that now a thing? Like, the man in the hat. I was looking at some different articles and the people trying to figure out, like, why, why a man in a hat, specifically. And some people said, well, maybe this is a more modern iteration. And maybe they're taking stuff from pop culture. Specifically, Freddy Krueger was one thing that they were kind of talking about. Um, because obviously Freddy Krueger wears a hat. So they're like, maybe people are just filtering the, you know, images from horror movies. And then when, as people talk about, oh, I had a nightmare about this guy in a hat. Oh my God, I did too. And then it's like, you know, it's going to spread around. But maybe the origin of it was that. But then I was kind of thinking, remember some of the folklore that we were talking about? A lot of those folklore, the dudes had hats on. Well, everybody wore hats in the ancient times. I guess you that's maybe what. So maybe, yeah, hat. like nowadays, like yeah. a hat seems weird because yeah. a lot of, most people don't wear hats anymore. But I guess back in the day, like a lot of people yeah. did wear hats. So it wasn't like hats. so strange. So it would almost be, it would almost be like saying, oh, the the dude with the arms or the dude with the head. Yeah. Like the dude with the hat on. Everybody had a hat on. Well, a hat is also kind of like a disguise. You can't see the face, especially if it's got a big brim. Mm. All right. Uh, this is in, in other cultures too. I remember being a kid, seeing some of these damn, uh, shogun movies or, or uh, ninja movies and shit from Japan, to where some some of the um, some of the samurai, especially like in rainy weather, would wear a big old straw hat that would come out and it was huge. It was bigger than a Western hat. It was yeah. also it's a big ass hat. It was a hat and an umbrella happening at the same time, and they even have a little window made out of like a little thatch work, so when they would look down, they could see through it, see through the brim. Yeah. So not only they is it blocking the rain, it's blocking your ability to see him. And they play that up in the samurai movies. You can't see who it is, so you've got a disguise. Your hat is also a disguise. So if you're dreaming of a mysterious figure, you just see the hat and his cloak and the outline. It's too dark. So his face is hidden. That's what they're talking about. It's the same as like a, a shadow person. Yeah, which or again a, is very common. But or like a I said, ghostly person, you just see the, the silhouette of a shat of a of yeah the, of, the, of the cape maybe, and the hat. So it's it's a disguise. Maybe that's what it is. So so not, maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with Freddy Krueger. Doesn't have anything to do with Freddy Krueger. It goes before that. Because that's what they, I'm thinking. They were making those Japanese samurai movies like that in the '60s, where you see a couple of samurai, but all you see is a silhouette of the hat and their fucking raincoat. Maybe they have some a katana in there, right? And they don't. Sh you're not showing you the face because their brim is down, and they're looking through the little fucking thatch thatch worked window in the fucking thing. See, and if it was a Western cowboy movie, they'd be wearing a fucking bandana tied around their fucking face, right? Like, like you know what I mean? But they didn't do that. Somehow in that's Japan. not. Somehow that's not quite as scary. They had they had a hat <laughs> that could act as a bandana covering your face, so they're. People are dreaming of somebody masked. You can't quite see them. That's yeah. what they're talking Which about. Which is always scary. And yeah, and Erica yeah. Lynn just said not being able to see a person's face is creepy, like yeah, clowns. Yeah, that's what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so I, and I think that's a pretty universal human fear because yeah. we're so, you know, predisposed by evolution to look at other people's faces right. to like read their moods and stuff yeah. so, and look at what their identity is. So like if you can't see that person because they have a mask on or something, yeah. that's kind of why a lot of people are freaked out by right. people like, like I said, clowns or people wearing right. masks or stuff like and that because you can't see them. Some cultures, the person doesn't, doesn't have access to a mask or doesn't wear masks. They have a hat that serves that same function. It's right. like a mask. You look down to Brill, you can't see the eyes. That's very insightful. Tom. That's what they're doing. That's what that's what they're talking about. So when you're asleep, 
you see a mysterious figure that's threatening you. He's got a hat on. You can't see his face. Right. That's what it is. And like I said, this because the whole thing, and I know that a lot of people that experience like sleep paralysis and stuff like that, like people that I've known that have told me this, like a lot of them see shadow people, which I kind of did. Yeah, I didn't think of it as a shadow person because it just looked like a regular dude, but I just couldn't like see. It was just a silhouette of a Can't person. Can't see his face, yeah. So, um, but that's kind of like, it. it's not a surprise to me that that's what people would be seeing, you yeah. know, because that's where a threat is going to come from, another person person in older cultures that person that you saw would have had a hat if you were living in the 1800s yeah he didn't have a hat on he would have had a hat on if you were if you were in the 1800s having that experience he just looked like a dude yeah with a baseball bat well just a dude with a baseball bat in the 1800s would have had a hat yeah because dudes wear hats right but nowadays not you wouldn't be able to see his face because his brim is he'd have been hiding behind a brim so like you said maybe the man in the hat thing is kind of like a more recent thing that people are talking about oh my god this is a universal thing that people see in their nightmares or in their sleep paralysis episodes maybe because wearing a hat is unusual now it's unusual whereas now, right? back then it would back then it would they probably wouldn't have noticed a hat that much yeah they didn't like, have it they wouldn't have noticed it right because everybody had one right and if it was cowboys having this experience it would have been banditos with masks bandanas tied around their faces for some reason wait, <laughs> i'm trying to think of like Waking up in the middle of the night and seeing a sleep paralysis yeah. figure. Yeah. For some reason, a cowboy would not be scary to me. Well, it's just, it's exactly the same thing that the Klan did. They wore a fucking mask it was, and they dressed up as a ghost. It was just a white outfit with a white, usually the first, the first Klan just would tie a white sheet around their face and poke holes in it. Like Jason. Like Jason in the second. Yeah, they were ghosts. Yeah, so they ghosts. Later on, you know, when the second clan came, you know, in the early 1900s, they had the whole pointed hat, which looked like a dunce cap. But what they were talking about, it had a front on it. It was (laughs) the thing is, is they borrowed that from Spain. That was a Spanish Inquisition hat. Yeah, is what it was. Somehow didn't look as intimidating when they did it, though. (laughs) Well. You only see them. Well, they were a Christian organization, and half of them were women. And you see them in the parades. They they weren't the Klan. It's not the Hollywood's version of the Klan. You know, they. My dad remembered them. He told me about them. He says that they were dorks, and they were well, mostly duh. like they were dorks. They were mostly. The thing is, is that you know the revisionist history and shit. The Klan mostly worried about Catholics. They were. They thought Catholics were going to take over the government. All right, and that. That the government would then be loyal to the to the uh, to the Pope. That's what they. Were, that's a lot of times they were worried about. They weren't too worried about black people. All that. Well, lynch, um, all that lynching stuff, and that wasn't really the Klan doing it. That was just regular Southerners doing it, and then the Klan was going, "Yeah, yeah, we did that." Well, no, um, I Some actually did it. I actually wrote about a lot of uh, murder cases in my book, and I didn't even cover all of them because there were a lot. Um, that they were pretty sure were clan members, and the, a lot of the times the clan members were also cops. Yeah, here's here's another thing though. In the old South, this is like in my grandfather's time, not so much in my dad's time. My dad's generation thought that was shit was fucking cheesy. It was kind of like Italian Americans. A lot of these thug type Italians guys all want to fantasize that they're in the mafia. If they fucking beat some dude up they just well it was the mafia you know what I mean yeah I'm in the mafia you're not in the mafia okay you're an Italian guy that wishes he was in the mafia that committed a crime a lot of that clan stuff was like that too it was just dudes committing crimes saying yeah I'm in the clan but they may have not necessarily been in a clan a formal clan you know the, the, it was regular southern guys doing it which but, doesn't make it any better the clan themselves mostly were just kind of fucking According to my dad, and he's from Mississippi when all that shit was going down. He grew up in it. The Klan was mostly just kind of like preachy religious people that um, were afraid that Catholics, they were afraid of the, uh, the what that Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, they they were, were afraid of everything. They were worried much. about government corruption, uh, that, the, that, that communists were uh, taking over the country and they were, they were going to make it a non-Christian country. They were worried about that. Um, they didn't. They didn't, at that, that. This is like the third, the second clan. There was three of them. Over. We got to do a whole show on those fuckers. 
they, they weren't all the same thing. It was more of well, a... Well, enough. everything is more complicated. Yeah, it was a lot more complicated than what sure. it was. Well, that's why everything's so right. interesting, because it's like, you know, yeah. you can go down so many rabbit holes about yeah, pretty and, much and everything. And the clan that you would have run around today are nothing like the first and the second clan. They're just totally different. Uh, now they're more like neo-Nazis. But that's not the way that the second clan was. The second clan was more like Bible thumpers. Um, they... They thought the north. They hated the north more than anything else. Uh, but you also, there was attacks and shit because you had like uh, lawyers from the north coming down and doing like civil rights type stuff that some of these clan and southern people thought was a violation of their territorial rights. More like that. They didn't. They just didn't like anybody from the north or anything having to do with the federal government. They just they were they saw themselves as an occupied territory, and that the North was the enemy, and they think well the North is trying to turn the black people against us, so they go out and they kill people over that, including black people. But like you know the little girls that got burned up and shit, those dudes that did that were white dudes, but they weren't Klan, they were just white dudes, white teenage dudes. All right, so we've gone way far afield. Mm. And like, how can yeah, we yeah. even bring this back to what yeah, I was I talking bring it about? Back. I was just saying those dudes would claim <sighs> anything, you know. Yeah, like I said, it's we can do a whole claims. show about that, right? Yeah, but that's not really what we're talking about. Yeah. So I didn't have that much left. Okay. But I'm not trying to bring it back to the topic. Okay, bring it back to the topic. Not really sure how to do that. Um, let me see. So we we're talking about hats, and then we went off on this whole thing. Uh, let's see. Okay. So like I said, I got interested in commonalities between nightmare themes now it would seem that there are actually not a huge amount of large-scale studies uh, you know a huge number of large-scale studies done about nightmare themes um you know just how common like certain themes are there are two major studies uh one of them was done where people kept a dream journal for a specific period of time and like it was specifically about nightmares and they wanted to know like you know what the which i kind of feel like is probably more accurate because people were writing down dreams as they happen but there was another one that was also kind of interesting that um you know these were both like you know 1100 1200 people which is a pretty large uh, sample size and um that one was just people recalling the last nightmare that they'd had and also the worst nightmares they had from childhood. So, you know, so the, but interestingly, the results were different, but not that different. Like the first one, I think it was a little over a thousand people. It was like a German study, I think. And the top five most common um, themes in nightmares for the people reporting. Uh, number one, by quite a large margin, was falling. Uh, that was, you know, 60, 70% of people reported having dreams about falling. Um, again, very common. Second one being chased by someone or something, almost always a man uh, or a monster. Being paralyzed was the third one. The fourth one was being late to an important event. And the, f uh, the fifth one was uh, loved ones disappearing or dying. Um, those were the top five you could pick they had like this big long list of themes and you had to like pick and stuff like that so the other major study which is kind of one that i went more in depth on um this one was people just giving their self reports of like over i think it was like a five week study and every time they had a nightmare they you know kind of wrote it down so they were kind of giving their accounts of the nightmares that they'd had that they remembered the best like over the five weeks of the study so the most common themes that we see here, and I thought you would find this interesting, Tom. Now, one thing that I did kind of think was interesting was that apparently it's very, very rare in nightmares across the board for the dreamer to be the aggressor. I have had dreams of this nature rarely. Like I've had one or two like that where I was, I think one time I was like the, the scream, what is ghost face? I think I was Ghostface yeah. uh, in one dream. But like I said, that might have been because I just watched that movie or whatever. But um, but apparently that's quite rare. 1% or something of people uh, um, reported that, that they were the aggressor. And another thing that's um, that they said turn up was uh, 
suicide, uh, they said that there was a small percentage of people that either uh, were going to kill themselves in the dream or actually killed themselves in the dream. And they were kind of interested in this in spe uh, specifically because they wondered if it had something to do with the person's waking uh, pathology. But of all of the themes that they saw in the dreams, most common by far, nearly 50% of the people reported physical aggression done against them. This would be people trying to kill them, people trying to kidnap them, people trying to beat them up, bite them, anything like that, anyone that was physically harming you. Um, nearly half of the people reported nightmares uh, concerning this. And they thought that maybe this had something to do with you know, people having uh, feelings of powerlessness or vulnerability or whatever, but this was by far the most common thing that was reported. The second most, most common thing was reported was kind of analogous to that, but it was like some also conflict, but nonviolent. So it was like you arguing with a partner or somebody at work or something like that. So the bulk of a lot of the people's dreams had to do with being attacked, either physically or psychologically or whatever. The next thing down was dreams of failure or helplessness. So this had to do with people having dreams that they made some kind of mistake that they couldn't fix. Um, dreams where you're failing a test, that's pretty common, or you know, you go in and you fuck you with it, you know what I mean? Like maybe you feel like unprepared for stuff. Um, this also, I believe, encompassed the classic nudity dream that you mentioned earlier. This is very, very common. Um, where you just suddenly are in, you're given a speech or something and you finally look, you look down and you're naked or whatever. Um, this is probably having to do with you feeling like you're being judged or you feel inadequate in some way. Um, and also, as I mentioned earlier, the fear of like missing a, an important event, again, a very common dream or you're late for something, um, that's probably having to do with you being feeling like you're not living up to other people's expectations. There's that too. The next one down was being chased. Like I said, this is very common. Um, interestingly, they found that among children uh, who reported nightmares about being chased was usually, the thing chasing them was usually a monster, like a vampire or a dragon or something like that. Um, adults, both male and female, 96% of the time they were being chased by a man. Um, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, almost always a man that was chasing them. Uh, children, it was usually a monster. So, you know, I, like I said, dream interpretation is obviously not an exact science, but I have seen that they've talked about maybe this means that you are being pressured to do something you want to, don't want to do or something of that nature. Um, about the same as being chased, in as far as percentage of people reporting it was an evil presence. So something that wasn't physically chasing you, but something that was in the room with you or just looking at you, like you just felt it like a ghost or some kind of something like a malevolent presence that was like looking at you. Uh, so that was also quite common. Um, below that was any kind of health related concerns and also death meaning either you or a loved one got a horrible disease or, you know, was injured or something like that. Um, you know, or this also encompasses a loved one dying or you dying in your nightmare. Um, and again, this subcategory also uh, includes the thing about your teeth falling out, which like I said, is very, very common. Um, and I've had that like lots of times. I probably had that dream it's not the same dream every time, but it's an aspect of a lot of dreams I had. That's probably the most common one that I've had of teeth falling out. Um, and I've seen a lot of interpretations of that. Like sometimes they're like, um, maybe you have like some kind of underlying fear of illness, or maybe you feel like, um, you know, some people have said, oh, maybe you're leaving your comfort zone, or maybe you feel powerless or something, or, or it's some kind of thing having to do with your like insecure about your appearance or something like that. Like I've seen that talked about too. Um, the other one down from that was accidents. Uh, anything having to do with like car crash, falling off a cliff, anything like that. After that was just a general 
apprehension or worrying about something and it, dreaming about you know something bad's going to happen but you don't know what it is uh underneath that was any kind of like big disaster like fucking nuclear war or anything like that that was about five and a half percent of people reported that um and the lowest one at least in this study a little under five percent was people reporting dreams about what they called environmental abnormality which just meant that anything it kind of meant anything that was in the environment that wasn't the way it usually was like you like you were in your room for example and like or you're out in the woods and like all the mushrooms are like fucking 10 feet tall or something like that it was like that kind of shit um they didn't really have any explanation for why people dream that that was just like some wild ass shit but there was that another thing that i found was kind of interesting i think i have these little charts here this was something that i think like some mattress company or something like that like did this quite large study about people's nightmares and like what they dreamed about and they kind of found at first their most common thing again falling was the most common thing 65 percent of 65 percent of people dream that then it was being chased death being lost trapped attacked missing an important event waking up late uh, loved one passing away, getting an injury, teeth falling out. That was 35% about natural disaster, you know, being visited by a dead family member, shit like that. Uh, spouse leaving you, being paralyzed, drowning. I've had ones like that. Um, going bald was in there too. That was 4.7%. Another one that I thought was interesting, they also did a comparison of gender like what was more common for men to dream and what was more common for women to dream um it wasn't as different as you might think most of the dream topics was roughly 50 50 like um with women and men dreaming about the same thing the only differences and i thought this was kind of interesting is that women were a lot more likely to dream about a loved one dying or a loved one that had died showing up and visiting them in their dream like it was a lot more likely for women to dream that on the other hand it was a lot more likely for men to dream about technological or mechanical failure yeah. like a computer oh, yeah. something or a car or something oh, that would break down that. which yeah which like i said i said yeah. that kind of tracks because you know not to be an asshole but women are generally more yeah. empathetic so we're obviously going to dream a lot more about, oh, my God, my husband or my kid or something like that died. Um, whereas a dude is like, oh, man, my, my car doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You know what it's I mean? It's more like a feeling of helplessness, too. The car doesn't work. Yeah. like, And you can't do anything about it. I've one where, you know, I'm being attacked by just a whole fucking rock concert full of fucking people, like a zombie attack. You pull out a fucking machine gun. And you, it fires off a good burst of like five or six rounds. And then all of a sudden they get weaker and weaker. And then the bullets are just drop it out of the barrel and then at the end you're just shaking and the shaking the, the gun and fucking rounds are falling out of the barrel like that oh it gets weaker and weaker yeah yeah that's really funny yeah like, as soon as i read that like as soon as yeah. i saw the disparities because like i said most of the topics yeah. was roughly 50 50 like men and women yeah. dreaming about it in the, about the same proportions but those three things whether it was death yeah. of a loved one or a loved one or a dead loved one visiting you in your sleep and like telling yeah. you shit, that was way more likely for women to dream that. Yeah. And it was way more like way more likely for men to dream about mechanical yeah. or technological, oh, technological yeah. like their computer breaking or their well, car breaking or something mechanical. Your breaking. main tools are some kind of technology. Right. You know what I mean? That's what's, that's what's saving you or that's what's, you know, getting you through it or that's what's making your money, you know? Right. So... Okay, even when I was a little kid, I'd have fucking dreams that I'm being attacked by the damn dialects from fucking Doctor Who. <laughs> right? And I had a damn laser fucking rifle. And I shoot at the dialects, and the laser cuts them in half. And I duck behind some shit because I'm getting shot at. And I fucking lose a little bit of confidence because I got shot at by the dialects. And I jump back out. And instead of it being a laser next time, it's just a machine gun. And it destroys some of them, and then I t duck it, and then I shoot again, and now it's just a, a real weak flamethrower shooting out some just burning oil. It's getting weaker every time, and then like the last time, it's just like a water hose shooting water like a spray gun. And you know, so you get the, 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 your technology is slowly failing you, and the dialects just keep coming. Yeah. 
See, that's what, like I said, when I read that, I almost kind of like, and like I said, everybody's different, but in general, like in my general experience, dudes are more object focused, whereas women are more people focused. All right. So that doesn't um, shock me that that was the two. Like I said, most of the topics were exactly the same. Because machines make sense. People don't. And, and dudes fucking love machines, and and because I mean, they do mostly they, what you want them to do when you make, want them to do they it. They mostly work when things are done right. Mostly, and if it's not working, not for it's me, they don't. You did something wrong. <laughs> right now, I'm fighting that fucking P zero three zero zero code, but I'm pretty sure it's fuel pressure, fuel pressure regulator. Well, I feel fuel like do, well, a lot of men, and you specifically, yeah, you seem to like to have a the problem yeah. that has a solution. Yeah, I just gotta find it. And people don't have a solution. No, we're we're messy. We're all over the place. And well, I'm o- analog. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um. You know, it's that's fine. I, I know that people are like that. It's frustrating, but that's just the way things are. You know what I mean? But I get it. I get that you just kind of like. Because it is kind of refreshing sometimes to be like, oh, here's this problem, and it's like, I do X, Y, Z, and then voila, it's fixed. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't do that with people. It doesn't work that way. So um, so I get, like, why that's a thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what I was thinking before was that when they talk about falling dreams and drowning dreams, the last nightmare that I remember before the one I had last night about you wanting to axe murder me was... Probably no. I didn't do I didn't have the dream on purpose. Yeah. And I didn't do I didn't do the thing where it's like I got mad at you like I thought you were really gonna kill me. I know you yeah. wouldn't I don't think you would do that no. unless you were on trend or something. No, no, even but on trend I didn't do that. That's true. You were on trend and you didn't kill me. Even though I thought you might, but because you were acting for crazy. fucking five months. You'd have been dead if I was gonna kill you on trend. That's true. But like I said, you were yeah. acting crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, if you've been on it longer, you might have. I don't really know. Uh... I don't know. So, um... I was protective and shit. I wouldn't have... I know. Yeah, I was protective of you. You generally are very protective of me. So, you know, so I get it. But prior to that, the last nightmare I had was at least six months ago, probably more. And what it was, was I was in... Well, in hindsight, it was supposed to be New York City, even though it didn't exactly look like New York City. It looked like some weird, fantastical version of New York City. But in my dream, I was like, oh, we're in New York City. And I was there with a friend of mine who I don't know who the fuck she really is. But because I woke up, I was like, who the fuck's that? I don't know. It was just some random NPC person who was supposedly my best friend. So we're in New York City and we spend the day there. We have a good time. We did some shit. I don't even remember what it was, but we just kind of went around and did stuff. And then we're like, okay, we have to go back to wherever we were going new jersey or whatever so it's like okay well we'll get a cab so we get in the cat in the back seat of the cab and we go over a bridge and the taxi goes off the side of the bridge and into the river and i very distinct and i still remember it nowadays because it scared the shit out of me and it woke me up I still very distinctly remember the feeling of the car going into the water like that and the car filling up with water and me looking at my friend, who I don't remember what she looked like now, but like looking at her and like the water going up and up and up like that. And as soon as the water got there, I woke up and that scared the fucking shit out of me. And that was the last nightmare that I had that woke me up. Well, see the thing about it. And I was like reading these, um, the papers about it, this paper that, um, that I was talking about just now about like the most common uh, dream themes where they had people kind of write down their most recent nightmares that they had over this five week study. One of the things that they were kind of trying to figure out was that, well, a lot of the studies, the very few studies that have been done about themes of nightmares and like the universality of them is that they thought that the definition of nightmare was too narrow because basically they're like these studies that have been done before like i said there haven't been that many but they said they're kind of operating under the assumption that a nightmare has to be something that causes terrible fear terror anxiety and that wakes you up and they're like and we don't think that's necessarily the case like you can have like a really bad dream and it doesn't wake you up you know what i mean and you can experience other emotions like anger or grief or whatever like and that can still be considered a nightmare um and they're like prior to this like the studies that have been done they kind of defined nightmare as something that was so terrifying that it woke you up and they're like we don't think that's the case so they kind of wanted to broaden shit a little bit 
So I think that was one of the things that they wanted to do. But I thought that was kind of interesting because, like I said, it just goes to show how, you know, like the whole thing with the teeth falling out dream. I had dreams like that my whole life, like as far back as I can remember. Like I said, not all the time, maybe a couple times a year or something like that. But it was always like kind of a component of some dreams that I had. And I thought it was just some weird fucking dream I had. But then like when I started looking into it more, it's like super, super common. Like when one... um thing that I looked at said like 30 something percent of people that during this study had reported having dreams of their teeth falling out, um, you know, in various situations. So I was like, okay, well, I don't think like, feel like such a weirdo now. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's a common one. Yeah. That's what I mean. But I didn't know that until like I started doing research into it. I thought it was just like me, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like I said, because they were specifically like super realistic. The only other nightmare that I really, really remember a lot and probably I remember it even better now because I wrote a story about it, is that I had a dream where I was at, I feel like I was in like a college dorm or something. And I was there with somebody, like my boyfriend or something at the time. Like I said, I don't know who the fuck it was. But um, so I woke up in the middle of the night because I heard something and it was dark and I go down the hall and there's another room of another person, like another student or whatever. And their door was open and I looked in there and it was a dude and he was looking at the TV, like the, like he was standing right in front of the TV and he was like screaming at it. And there was like a woman on TV just doing normal woman shit. But he was just like screaming, you slut, you whore, you fucking. And I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna keep on going. So I was just like, I'm just gonna not get involved in that. And then like I went down the hall and I went downstairs to the kitchen and I was gonna make myself a sandwich or something like that. And then there was like a girl in there and she was like looking out the window and there was like sirens. Like, you you know what I mean? Like you could see like the police lights and stuff. And I was like, what the fuck's going on out there? And she like pretended she didn't hear me. She's like, whatever. And she just like went past me and like went back up the stairs. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm just like making a sandwich. And then these people came in, like a couple comes in, like a dude and a woman. And they just come in and they didn't acknowledge me or anything. Cause I was just standing there like, in the kitchen and then they came in the living room and it was dark and they just came in and they started like making out or something and i was like oh okay just pretend i'm not here that's fine <laughs> because i thought it was a little weird and i'm just like i'm just putting peanut butter on the shit it's like it's fine and then he throws her down the ground and he took her ankles in his hands like that and i knew i was like he's gonna pull her legs apart or he's gonna pull her feet off that's what I thought in my mind. And so he goes like that. And then he did. He was like, and he pulled her feet off and dropped them. And I was just like, oh, shit. And then he gets up and he like looks at me. And I can even remember what he looked like. Like he was this big, like he had this big wide face. And he had like this slicked back, like blonde hair and these like real, like big blue eyes. And so he's like looking at me. I'm like, oh, fuck. And all I have is like a butter knife, right? So I have the butter knife like this, like, um... What am I going to do now? So then like he comes at me and I'm trying to like stab him with the butter knife. And then he like I tried to kick him at first. Like I tried to kick him, but there was like a uh, like a board or something like that. Because it was like a, um, you know, like a thing you have in the kitchen where it's what do they call that? It's not an island, but you know what I mean? It's like a peninsula. That's what they call it. So it's like a peninsula and I kick him like that. And then my foot like hit the peninsula and I was like, shit. And then I woke up, and I think this might have been a long time ago, because I think this is before I was with you. This might have been bef when I was with my ex-husband, and I actually kicked my ex-husband in real life <laughs> because I was. Because I. You've done that to me. In and bed. he's like, "Why'd I you mean, kick?" Me? She kicked me before. And I was like, "Why'd you kick?" It might have been you then, because yeah, I can't. I me. thought it was like a long no, time no, ago. No, it was me. I you, you yeah, maybe it was me. you that I kicked. So what was that for? And you, oh, I was dreaming about something. I kicked. Yeah. yeah, it was a murderer, and all yeah, I had yeah, was a right. all I had was a butter knife. So I was just kind of like, well, shit. So I started to kick, but then like I didn't, I couldn't hit him because, and then he grabbed my hand, my hand that had the knife in it. And he started going like that, like he was going to pull my arm off. And that's when I woke up because he had pulled that girl's feet off before. So I was like, oh shit, he's going to pull my hand off. I kind of need that. And um, <laughs> so yeah, so I actually turned that into a story later. Like it's not exactly the same as the dream, but it's pretty similar. Like I tried to kind of... Uh, <sighs> Sidequest here said, oh my god, you guys are still going? I figured I missed it. Yeah. No, I mean, you that's, know. That's Katrina. Well, this is like a good um, she topic. Van she vanished off Instagram. Her her shit is just as user on her Instagram, just as Instagram user. All her shit's gone. 
she goes, she says, well, I'm taking a break from social media. She's got yeah, get, a lot of people. She got to get her head right. Yeah. I don't. I'm not really on social media that much, so I don't. I scroll through Facebook and shit, but I don't really bother with it yeah. a lot of the time. Like I answer messages and stuff, but even then, I'm just kind of, you know, I just work on making my videos and writing my shit and doing that kind of stuff. So it's that. Yeah, she said I probably should have sent out a warning. I mean, yeah. you know, it's okay. Oh. Um, the Phantom said. It would be awesome to see all the research that a college collected on sleep paralysis if a college has ever done one, along with shadow people research. Yeah, I kind of feel like there's probably not as much of it as we would like, but the more that I read about this, the more that I got really interested in reading about sleep research, you know? Just not not necessarily sleep research, but dream research, because dreaming and nightmares are like so, so fucking weird. And, like, where do they come from? So that's what I said. That's why I kind of got interested in maybe starting to keep a dream journal and shit like that. Because, I don't know. I just got kind of got interested in it. And then, like, people were talking about kind of, like, doing shit with LSD and, like, lucid dreaming and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, I don't know. Maybe I'll get into the doing that. Because it's just, I don't know. It's interesting. The Phantom said, I also have recurring dreams about black bears and the fear of passing by the tree that they're hiding up in. <laughs> they won't hurt you, though. Erica Lynn said, Jenny's dreams sound like my dreams on sleeping pills. <laughs> I freak out about those things. I don't, like, most of my dreams are super boring. Like, I don't even remember them. They're just, like, super, I'm just doing boring shit, and it's, like, not interesting at all. But when I have a nightmare, it tends to be, like, a really, really bad one. You know what I mean? But I only have them maybe once or twice a year. Maybe, if that. Which is strange, because, like I said, I read about horrible crimes and... I can sit there on Netflix and, like, watch eight hours of true crime shit and, like, not have nightmares at all, which is, I don't know what that says about me, but it is nonetheless true. In some ways, I I don't want to say this, but I, I was going to say I kind of wish I had more nightmares because, I, like I said, I've written some really good short stories based on some fucked up nightmares I had, but I just don't have that many, you know? I don't know why that is. I haven't really had real strong dreams in a while mm. <clears throat> yeah I don't really know I, I mean obviously probably you have a lot more crazy dreams when you're younger yeah when you're younger you're a lot better um, who was that somebody was asking I think it might have been Allison or uh, who was it saying asking who could fly oh yeah asking about flying dreams yeah was that Tammy that asked about I that I think that was Allison asked that Allison. yeah I could only fly my dreams when I was a kid I was a kid, I could fly. And not only could I fly, I could fly in my toys. I had a dream. I, well, I had this toy car you could get in. It was a, uh, I think it was a toy fire engine. It's made out of sheet metal. You could pedal it, and it was red, and it drive around. It's old 70s, early 70s toy. Probably actually came from the late 60s. Probably made it for a long time. Well, I wanted an airplane like that. Uh, like an airplane, like a, I wanted a fucking, I wanted that fucking Fokker triplane, like the Red Baron had. I wanted one of that same scale. Well, I had a dream that I had one of that scale, though. Went in the backyard, and it was sitting right there. I goes, oh, yeah, there's my airplane. And I get in the airplane, and it fucking, I turn it on, and I actually fly. And I'm flying over my fucking house and the town in an airplane. A little airplane the size of a fucking toy. That's so cute. Fucking loved that dream. It was one of my best dreams. I was just having so much fun. I was cutting loop-de-loops and trying to land it. And I, I you know, that was, that was, a, that was real fun. But I haven't really had, and I had some other dreams when I was around that age that I could just uh, lift up off the ground like I was levitating and, 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 and in front of people in my dreams, you know, yeah. and fly and float. Now, what that ended up culminating in the last time I dreamt it was probably when I was about eight, is I had a dream that I walked up a wall and was just standing on the wall and everybody else was amazed. It felt yeah. real good. I did it again. <laughs> came back down, and then I stepped on the wall again. So I did it like a couple times, and it felt like I was really doing it. I was like, man, this is awesome. I can walk up a wall. But then I, uh, like on the third try, it started to get difficult to do it. It wouldn't do it. And I get frustrated, and I think I woke up. I had a dream when I was a kid that I was in. If you've been to Disney World, I'm not sure if the ride is the same at Disneyland, but the Peter Pan ride. You know the Peter Pan ride? Yeah. 
I dreamed I was inside the Peter Pan ride, um, specifically in the place where the al where the alligator is. He's like kind of coming out of the floor, and but I was on the floor. I wasn't like in one of the ships because the Peter Pan ride, if you don't know, it has like all these big pirate piratey looking ships but they're like on a thing on the ceiling so you kind of go around the ceiling and look down at the stuff on the floor yeah but i kind of dreamed i was on the floor and i wanted to fly up to the ceiling so i took out this little uh patch it was about this big it was you know the bigger band-aids that are like a patch band-aid yeah, it, looks it was about that size yeah except in the middle it was furry Right. Like there was little brown fur. Okay, yeah. And I and it was about that big, as big as like a little patch band aid. Yeah. And I put that on the floor and stood on it. Yeah. And then I could fly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's magical flying. So it's like a magical carpet, but it was like as yeah. big as a band aid. Yeah. And it had fur on it. And yeah. I remember that like pretty because I remember the the alligator like because I last time I went to Disney with my sister. Um, we went on the Peter Pan ride because I said, I haven't been on this in a million years. And I remember that dream about it. And I was yeah, like, yeah. I want to go on this again. And I was like, when I went over the part with the alligator, I was like, oh my God, that's what I remembered. I may have had a flying carpet dream. And I, uh, if I remember correctly, I, I did fly on a carpet and it didn't work too well. Yeah. Like it worked for a few minutes. And then I, once I realized how ridiculous it was to fly on a carpet, it stopped working and I probably fell off of it. I don't think I was very high. You know, yeah, like three or four feet off. The I ground. zoomed all around on that little yeah, band aid, I think, furry I think, band aid. I, think I did that one. It was like this, like, and I was a kid when I dreamed it, but it was still like super tiny. Allison said she was having flying dreams in her twenties. That's pretty rare. Yeah. Usually, I think you you outgrow flying dreams like by the time you're ten or eleven. You know, you can't fly. You just wish you could fly. See, really like all oh, man. Yeah. I always just being like, man, being an adult is just like having all the magic like beat out of you, and that's yeah. like that's so sad. Yeah. Like, don't let that happen. Well, I know you guys are all adults, but I'm just saying, yeah. try not to let that happen. Erica said, um, "Where can we read your stories? You have books, right? Yeah, like all my stuff is on um, Amazon. Just look up Jenny Ashford, and there's like a whole bunch of. I have a couple books of. Um, I have a couple novels and a couple." Short story compilations, which I would start with those because that's that's my favorite. My, I've written novels, but my preferred medium is short stories. And she's got some true crime and some paranormal. Yeah, I've also done like true crime and paranormal. Yeah. Like, so I've done some nonfiction stuff yeah. too. American Military 100 said, do dream researchers have any conjecture about why people dream about their teeth falling out? Like all I've heard, I've heard lots of different things. Um, most, The most common thing that I've heard is that it's because you feel powerless because from an evolutionary standpoint, your teeth are really important, right? Because that's how you eat. So, you know, back in the day, like if you if your teeth fell out, you'd kind of be hosed if you didn't have anybody that would like, you know, make you smoothies and feed you and stuff because you couldn't eat meat. So, so a lot of um, interpretations say that it's a powerlessness thing. But I've also heard that it means that you're insecure about your appearance. Which could also be, or you're insecure about aging or something. But I don't really know. Like I said, dream interpretation is obviously not an exact science. And you'd have to like look into the person's life as like what they were, why they were dreaming about that specific thing, you know? I think teeth falling out, and it happened, I, I dreamt that when I was really young. I think teeth falling out really is, has to do with like being toothless, being powerless. Mm. And it's probably something real primal. Cause that I, makes the most sense to me. Yeah. And, and it, because. It, you, it's probably something real primal. An animal, if it loses its teeth, it's dead. It's going. That's die. what I'm saying. So that's why I think that's probably you, you, why you can't eat and you can't kill game and you can't hunt. So you, it, it's kind of like impotence. Being yeah. Impotent. It's like there's nothing you can do. Helpless. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. And I feel like a lot of dreams, the most common types of dreams, are usually people that feel like they don't have any control yeah. if you're falling from a great height or if you're um being chased by something it's usually something that's anxiety. like you said kind of primal like yeah. anxiety about losing power losing control yeah. um over your own life i feel like there's that's most of what the dream themes kind of yeah. mean at the heart of it and you're at school and you're walking around and everything seems normal and you look down and you don't have pants on you forgot to put your pants on your shit's flapping and everything <laughs> That can only be one My thing. shit's not flapping. That, yeah, I have a dude. My I shit be flapping. Well, I know that. You'd be like, it's can only be one thing. Uh, fear of exposure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. obviously what that yeah. is. I don't think I've ever... Vulnerability. I don't vulnerable. think I've ever had the naked dream. I've had a yeah. lot of, oh, shit, I'm late for something dream. I've had... That's pretty common. I've had that a lot. Like, oh, I overslept and I was meant to do this thing today and I missed it. Like, I've had that a lot. Um, which, again, very common. And another thing, too, and I don't even think they brought this up on the common thing. And this is this is so sucky. Have you ever, like thought you woke up and like did your regular shit like you got up and like you know went to the bathroom and brushed your teeth and took a shower and get got ready for work or whatever and then like you actually woke up have you ever had that happen no. oh. i always kind of know that i'm sleeping in a way no i've had that happen a few times and that's like that's super shitty because then because it seems so real and then you wake up and you're like man i gotta do all that shit over again <laughs> it's like it's like that like i've had that happen a few times too yeah. And the, and some people have said that that is even scarier because then like the rest of the day like you're wondering are you still dreaming or not? Yeah. Which I see that I can I, see that. Yeah, Allison, I think uh, dreams of flying is about uh, liberation and uh, 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 being weightless and having you know control. You know what I mean? Having control over yeah. dreams and, and being able to do whatever you want. It's it's, it's flying. You know, but. For some reason i think most people fucking become real more grounded they yeah become, like you can't literally you know, yeah you can't break rules and you know so, yeah life kind of beats yeah. the shit out of you so by i think by the time i was 10 i flying dreams went away yeah which like i said that's kind of sad yeah but i'm sure you could bring it back if you like deliberately wanted to in a different way like you're flying in an airplane right or you know or th it's things like that I was going to say, too, like, one of the weird things is that because I'm one of my fears is being in a plane crash, like, because I'm scared of flying, you yeah. would think that sometimes I would have nightmares about that, but I don't. I have had nightmares about plane crashes, but every single nightmare that I've had about plane crashes, I was always on the ground watching it crash in a field. Like, I was never on it. Yeah. And I don't know if that's my brain trying to, like... Yeah. Like, not scare me too bad. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, here, we're having a plane crash dream, like, is scary to you, but it'll happen over there. Like, you're not on it. It's fine. All right, it's almost 1030. You want some ice cream? Um, yeah, hold on. Okay. Uh, Jeff Yard says, yeah, my mother and I still have flying dreams. See, that's, I think it's very rare. Like, the older yeah. you get, I think that's, like, less likely to happen. But, you know. SideQuest here said, all right, my Ambien is fully kicking in, so I'm off to sleep. I'll see you guys Friday night. Friday night is Sidetrack show, right? Yes, it is. Um, and that's, like I said, that'll be... A super fun show. Are we? I don't think we're not going out Friday night, are no, we? Um, uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll go out Saturday night instead. Because yeah. I kind of like to do the Friday night show and not worry about okay. leaving. You know what I mean? All right. Um, but yeah, so Friday night we'll be back for the sidetrack show. So that should be fun. Tomorrow I'm going to put up a review of uh, Poor Things, the Yorgos Lanthimos movie. So if you wanted to see me talk about that, then I'm going to put that video up tomorrow. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this show this evening. I had a lot of fun researching this one. And we will see you guys again on Friday night. Good night.